Good morning. Welcome to Seven Quarter. Um, boy, have we got a fantastic four hours. This is our last four hour day, isn't it? Tomorrow we go to five hours. John's launching our five hour day. So we won't be on air until nine o'clock tomorrow, but we will go through until two. Um, but today it is the last of our four hour days. So we're here live from eight until midday with you. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, right, would you like to see how today's shaping up? We've got a cracker for you. 8 a.m. We have got clever tools and gadgets. Yes. Uh, we have got at 9 a.m. sophisticated crepe dress. Uh, we've got Ciel in. We've got Claire Louise Hardy in for that. Uh, then 10 a.m., Carolyn Forster. If we can tear her away from signing all of those books this morning, she'll be here to launch her brand new book with us. Uh, excited for that. There are, we worked out, um, 68 projects in her new book. Yes. Uh, now, 11 a.m. is the uh, second part of CL's um, shows with us this morning, and that's the chic cropped jacket that goes with the sophisticated crepe dress. Do you want to have a quick look? Look. Woo, looking sophisticated. Isn't it lovely? The wedding season is upon us. You could be looking your best. Dress and jacket, one pattern. Ba 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 ba. Looking lovely, isn't it? Fabulous. Now, how about a brand new book? These will all be signed. If anybody's been on our fan page this morning, they will have seen photos of Carolyn struggling to get through the mountains of books that we went, would you mind signing a few? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, so she's busy, busy signing, and she'll be here ready at 10 o'clock. Let me pop that down there, uh, because it needs signing, quite frankly. Now, uh, if you would like to get in touch this morning, say hello to our guests, or just, you know, a little message, hi, how are you doing, send in your pictures, whatever. Here is how you do so. You head to our website, which is www.sewingquarter.com. You click on watch. That's where we are live in HD. And then that's how you message the studio, just down there to the right. Message, message, message. And then um, all of the items on today's show, because we've got a lot of, a lot of different crepes for you today. So they will all come down um, when we do those uh, next hour. They will be there. If you would like to send us photos of your makes, then photos go to studio at sewingquarter.com. Now, clever gadgets and tools this morning. That's how we're starting out. Um, we realized we were having a chat about this because one of my favorite tools and gadgets is actually this little pot of, of wonderment here. Um, and this is called Odicoat. And when we first brought this to wear, it absolutely flew and sold out in, in moments. And basically, it's a waterproof adhesive gel that will turn your normal cotton fabrics um, into like a very lightweight oilcloth. So it makes them water repellent, which is absolutely fabulous. And, uh, and we realized that actually we hadn't shown you in a while and that we'd had so many new viewers and we hadn't actually shown you how to use it in a while. So... Um, <laughs> In that long, in fact, all of our paintbrushes from when we painted the studios have gone. And when I ask, have you all got a paintbrush? This was the only one that we could find. So I'm going to show you, you will need a larger paintbrush at home. But for the interest of this was all we had in the studio this morning, we'll go with that. So find yourself a paintbrush. Um, for whatever project you decide to go with, I mean, look at this, for instance. This is um, a wash bag. And it's beautiful Lewis and Irene fabric there, and that has been odor coated. Now, let me just show you in here a few little samples because this is your normal fabric. That's your normal fabric. That was how this started out, okay? Normal, normal fabric. With one coat of odor coat, that is water repellent. But you can see it really hasn't changed the fabric very much at all. There it was before, there it is after. It's just got a very slight gloss. Now, with two coats, you get a slightly deeper gloss, and with three coats, even more shine. There you go, you can really see it there. So the, the amount of waterproofness, awful English, bear with me, um, doesn't, doesn't get any more so the more coats you put on. It's just the depth of shine that changes. So I'm just gonna start with one coat and just show you how you would do it. Now, the important thing with Odicoat is about making sure that the, the, the um, 
the threads are all coated. So what I would say is cut yourself your fabric. Don't cut it to the actual um, size that you need. Just uh, cut a little bit larger because the fabric may distort slightly as you work into it. So if I just cut myself a little section here, just like that. Because we haven't got oodles and oodles and oodles of time to do this. And I have the world's smallest paintbrush. Um, here we go. So the very first thing that you will want to do is paint it on. Now, obviously, with your larger paintbrush, this will uh, this will not take you quite so long. But you see, it just it just goes on. As it, in fact, pour a little bit on, then we get on. Um, so just it, it and it's slightly cloudy to start off with. That's absolutely fine because it will dry clear as you've seen. So pop it all on with your paintbrush. I know I'm making a mess with your sports, absolutely fine, because you want it coating both your warp and your weft threads. So pop that on first of all, then go and delve into your wallet and retrieve yourself an old store card. Don't obviously use your credit card or something if you still want to use it. Find yourself, um, you know, an old, an old store card and then you work the gel across like that. You go one way like that. So you work it into your warp and your weft thread. So I've got it in there, scoop it up. There will be some left up on that, that's absolutely fine. And then you wanna go the other way. That's why I'm saying don't cut your pattern piece of size. Can you see that's gone slightly wonky there? Absolutely doesn't matter, but just make sure that you work that in, in both directions, okay? When that is done, if you've got any left over, put it back in the pot. You really don't use very much at all. So it does last a long time. Clean off your paintbrush. And then by the end of the show, that should be dry and ready to go. And then you use it just like you would your cotton, anything else like that, um, it, you are good to go. Just wipe down, wipe down your, your, your mat, obviously. If you need to, just put a little bit of water. And actually that is just a little uh, side with your cutting mat, especially if you've got a self-healing cutting mat. Don't be afraid to sometimes just wipe them down with a baby wipe or a damp cloth because it does help them reheal. So if you have made a little sticky mess, don't worry. There you go. Karen's asked a question. Oh, hang on. Let me just get my questions up. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Right, let me just get that question. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Where are we? Is it easy to sew through? Yes. Um, let me show you these again. So that's, that's your normal cotton. That will dry. That's your normal cotton. And if I show you layer one, you can see it is, there's very little difference in texture at all. That's your normal cotton there, and you can see just, you can barely see any shine. But let me show you. If I just pop that on there, can you see that is just going to, there you go. And that's from one coat, that's from just one coat, which is fab. Absolutely fab. And that is why we love odor coat. Um, and again, so that's with one coat. If I do, this is with three layers. And again, it just rolls off. So it doesn't matter how many layers you put on of the odor coat, as long as you've worked it and covered the warp and the weft threads, it's absolutely fine. And it's, it's just lovely and it's just a great product to have in your stash. So just imagine all those beautiful printed fabrics that you've got uh, that you would just love to make makeup bags with. Um, we've had people use it for all sorts of different things. Um, but there's lots and lots of different projects, lots of different ways that you can use it. Uh, wash bags are obviously one of the favorites, especially if you've got a gorgeous fabric and you don't want it getting damaged, you don't want it getting... Um, I mean, you don't have to odor coat that side. You can always odor coat the inside. If you want it so that no makeup or anything comes through to the outside, then you can do both sides of it. There's no reason why not. 
and that is it. That was one. So you just sew as normal. You don't need any different needles or anything like that. Um, and that is the joy of it. It's not like working with an oil cloth where you might have to look at a different needle. Um, it still sews up like cotton, which is fab. Um, so there you go, Karen. I hope that helps. So that's eau de coat. That's my, uh, my favorite thing this morning. Well, one of my favorite things this morning. I can't be limited to just one favorite thing. I'd be wrong. Very, very wrong. Uh, right, okay, whilst I've got fabric out and about, let's have a little look at, yeah, well, this is, this is when it comes down to cutting, this is definitely one of my favourite things, and that is the circle cutter. Now, I know a lot of you have seen this before, but again, we get new viewers all the time, and, uh, and I want everybody to appreciate, because a circle cutter is something that, uh, um, circuit, cutting circles is something that often people shy away from, because... It's a, it's, a tricky, it's a tricky size. That's all there is to it. It's just a bit tricky sometimes. So the more I can demo it, the more I can demystify and show you it's actually really, really easy to use. So this is the Fiskar Circle Cutter. It comes with the cutting blade. The blade is in there, and it only becomes activated once I press down on the top there. That engages the blade. So it's safe to have around. Now, any other circle cutter that we have on the market here, uh, you would need to have your own small rotary cutter, but this one comes with it. So that's already a big bonus in my book. Um, little grooves here, little um, bits there that stick out, fit into the grooves of the ruler. You've got markers on the top there to let you show, to show you exactly where they are underneath. I don't know if you can see, there you go. That denotes where that is underneath, so you're gonna know exactly where to place it. Um, in terms of your fabric, you can cut a uh, half, tri uh, half triangle, half circle, full circle, it's entirely up to you. If you're doing just a half circle, then you would line up the bottom of your fabric to this bottom line here, that gives you your seam allowance. If you're going for a full uh, circle, then you fold it, you line it up onto that fabric fold line there. Now these numbers along here, two, three, up to 12, they give you your finished circle size. These have got um, a quarter of an inch seam allowance added to it. So that will actually give you a two and a half inch um, up to a 12 and a half inch. Uh, but it is, it's just, it's just fab. Now I wonder if I can do this sitting down. I've never tried this sitting down before. Let's see. So you pop it into the grooves, you press down. You do have little uh, non-slippy-dy things there. And you want to keep the pressure applied all the way round. And then when you do, and you'll hear it if it's missed any threads, but that is what you should get every time. I put a new blade in last time we came to air because actually, um, it, you know, you'll hear, you'll soon hear if you're not getting a clean cut and it just means that you need a new blade. But there it is, perfect every single time. I absolutely love it. And that's gonna give you consistently sized circles, perfectly cut every single time, and it's an absolute joy. So whether you're um, cutting out a circle so that you can applique behind it, reverse applique, however you're gonna do it, absolutely brilliant. We do love the circle cutter. Cut one more time. Yes, 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 yes. It is incredibly quick to use. It's very easy to use. I like it. When we do... Um, Things like the um, like our rainbow bundles. I always think of the circle cutter because I just want to do. Imagine like that. All your different colours. Be amazing. Be absolutely amazing. And there it is. Or like um, uh, a star, a star kind of planet type quilt with satin rings. You could easily do that with this, couldn't you? But it's just, it's just a really easy, easy, safe way. And that's the thing, isn't it? I know that a lot of you go and get your plates out of the kitchen. Please don't use your plates to cut circles. It's so dangerous. Uh, plus, you won't have the size necessarily that you want. Uh, but this is easy. It's, it's great. It's effective. And it's safe, more to the point. Um, and like I say, there it is, $31.99 for your Fiskars Circle Cutter. Fiskars, of course, have been uh, making blades now for oh, about 400 odd years. 
So they do know their stuff when it comes to a blade or two. Uh, they really do know their stuff. So I would highly, highly recommend it. And I know that lots of you um, have had it and have been kind enough to say, actually, you know, yes, uh, pop, a, pop a little review and gone, yes, no, absolutely love it um, when you've had it at home. So it's always lovely to hear your feedback. Thank you very much. So we do love hearing from you. Uh, so get your messages in this morning. Maybe you've got the circle cutter. How has it changed your circle cutting life? Let us know. Um, we've got replacement blades as well. Now this is the other thing with it is that if you are um, maybe a paper crafter as well, and again, it doesn't matter whether you're, um, your fabric or paper, cutting circles is still tricky. Uh, get yourself a replacement blade. I would get one anyway, but I would certainly, if you're gonna be cutting out paper um, a lot, then I would certainly get a separate blade for your paper. Now this is just $5.99. They are incredibly easy to change over because I know sometimes that's off putting for you. So let me just show you how easy that is to change. So all you do, unscrew the top. Now you just have to line up the gap with that. There like that and it just pops out. Take out your blade, swap it in for a new one. And again, line those up, twist, done. Pop the top back on. That's it, done. That's how easy it is to change. So don't look at that and think, oh my goodness, that's gonna be really tricky to do. You just literally drop the new blade in. Uh, it's actually far easier than any rotary cutter to change and far safer. So nice and easy to do and you're good to go again. So that's what I would say. Questions, questions, go on then. Give me some questions. Grab the, pa hang on, I've got stuff. Oh, grab the packet. Here we go. So here is your eau de coat. So we use this for waterproofing our fabrics, our cotton fabrics. We use it for eau de coating. Uh, so all those beautiful things. Uh, so fabrics, accessories, objects. Uh, Carol says, thank you Natasha for the demo. Um, it has now taken the fog away. Well, I'm very glad that could help. Uh, and Tina says, morning Natasha, can you apply it after you have made the item? Love Tina. Um, you can, but for the best effect, then I would apply it before. And certainly before you cut your template, like I say, because you don't want the fabric to distort as you really work into it. Um, but mm, uh, you, I mean, you can use it on cotton, jeans, lace, muslins, uh, and that, that, all that sort of thing. Um, and is it good for table mats? Yes, 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 it is. Absolutely it is. Um, it is washable up to 30 degrees. So, uh, but also what I would say is that, um, Karen, wipe it. You can wipe it clean too, uh, because obviously it, it's sort of water and whatnot repellent. So I would, I would give that. Um, have we got pictures of them? Oh, cool. Hey, look at all these. So we've got Sue, I put eau de coat on this rucksack. Fabulous. Yeah, you see all these sorts of things. Uh, lots of people using it for bags. This is perfect. I've been making rucksacks and I've used the eau de coat on them. It's brilliant. Um, if it moves in my house, it's eau de coated. <laughs> Julie, I feel sorry for your cat. Uh, used eau de coat on a bag and found it much easier to sew the eau de coated fabric as opposed to real oil cloth. Jane, it is, isn't it? It is much easier because you still retain that softness of the cotton. So it is. Um, now I'm just reading the back of the pot here uh, and it says can also be used in as, a, as an adhesive for fabrics or on all wood, cardboard, metal, glass, ceramic, pottery, styrofoam, stone, the list goes on. It's one of those pots that when you get at home, we show you fabric because we're a fabric channel, but when you get at home, you're gonna find lots of different ways to apply it and use it. It's one of those very, very useful little pots. And for 14.99, you get a lot out of there as well. Um, now, when you, because we always get asked, well, how much will it do? But again, how long is a piece of string really? How many layers are you going to put on? Um, and also just the weave of the fabric, if it's a looser weave, obviously you end up using a little bit more. It's just, it's just one of those things, that, but it, I've, I've barely used any, barely used any. Right, ah, oh, the loop turner, yes, yes, yes. I think now when they put these shows together, they just go, what does Natasha love? And we'll just put that on her show. Um, I actually keep it in a, in, a, in a handle ready to turn now, bag handle ready to turn. Now, um, in this 
let me just sort this out into three. You get three loop turner sizes. So if you are someone that struggles or puts off projects because you don't want to turn those loops through, I know that for me, um, one of the banes of my life I know life's not that bad really, is it, if this is one of the banes, but it's, it is when you have to make a back handle and then turn it through. It takes me ages and then I pull, I end up pulling my stitching apart. It's a right old faff. Uh, not anymore with these. Also, when I do toy making, uh, anything like that, I will use this one. Rulo loops, you can use that one. So different sizes, three different sizes for different size loops that you want to turn. So for example, you have got your bag handle. So this, um, well, this is, should be, yeah, this is 22 inches. So that is salvage to salvage, folded in half and sewn. There you go, part of your bag handle. Um, if you need to turn that through, I would take the largest one Insert the tube, and there it is. De -de 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 -de. And again, this only takes seconds. I think uh, producer Paul challenged me to this once, and it took me six seconds start to fit. I've done it in six seconds since producer Paul. Seven seconds, and then six seconds was my was my very best. And that's it turned. I, I'm I'm comfort, not speed, at the moment, producer Paul. That's my excuse. And that's it turned. Now, uh, the beauty of it is, it just, it literally takes seconds. So in it goes again. So if you, if this is something that you hate, if you're working with a fine fabric as well, go with the flat end, not with the pointy end. Um, but there you go, it's, it's as simple as that. And you'll see me use these on the shows because I absolutely love them. And then you've already got your point in there to then push out your points. And that is it done. Oh, um, a customer who hasn't given their name says, I bought turners last time on the show and they saved me so much time on octopus legs. Love them. Uh, talking of octopuses or octopi, we've got, uh, we've got Ollie the octopus with Carolyn Forster at 10 o'clock um, in her book. So uh, yeah, uh, and uh, again, any job where I can actually say that we have managed to save you time on an octopus's leg makes me happy. Bet your accountants don't get to say that. Uh, now, we're quite limited on these, so please do check these out, but they are absolutely fabulous. Now, the next thing that I would say is, so you've turned your, your bag handle through, pressing it, because you might have turned it through, but there's still a seam or two, and that's where the loop pressing bars come in. I've got everything for you this morning. Uh, this is where your loop pressing bars come in. 7.49. Here they are, different sizes for you, depending on the size of, well, your loop. Now, um, what you will do is get the relevant size, turn your iron on, which I haven't, um, but you would just insert that and then push it up against those seams. So then, because that's the thing, isn't it? You know, you have these seams and then sometimes you don't end up getting it straight. So you press it up against, there's my seam there, press it up against the seam and then you iron over the top, you press over the top. So you're not losing any width of your fabric because you can really press out those seams and then press. Now, uh, the reason that you've got these on is if you want to uh, do any cord work or anything like that, uh, then you can put that through. Uh, maybe you want to do a pipe to edge, then you can put your cord through and then pull that through using that. Just pop it on there, pull it through any of the sizes. So you've got various different sizes. It's incredibly useful, isn't it? So you can do your three-day applique, three-d applique, Celtic quilting designs. So I've got six different sizes. One, two, three, four. Oh, no, no, five, sorry, five different. So six, nine, 12, 15, and 18 mil. And it's written on there. So this is the largest one. This is 18. So even if you've lost the packaging, you'll know that's 18 mil there. But it is really one of those handy things, especially if you're then going to go in and top stitch or anything. You don't want to have lo lost um, any, of, any of your edge. You want it nice and crisp, so just put that in, push it against the edge. You see, nice and crisp there. Press. There you go. 
job done. Um, I don't think we've ever actually put that in fabric to show you before. So, and you, you just use your eye and it's fab. Uh, okay, next up we have the whaty what? Oh, the magnetic pin cushion. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, do use this out to stock up on useful gadgets. Um, and this is this is one of my favourite ones. Um, did you buy your mum this producer pool? Did she did she really love it? She uses it every day. Yeah, well she will. Oh, now um, this is one that I, is a must in my workroom. And I have to say, for those of you that um, follow me on Facebook, you'll have seen that little kitten Theo has just joined us at home. Uh, which sadly, we lost Hugo um, a week or so ago, and so my cat Hugo. So um, baby Theo has come to join us. He's a little ragdoll cross Bengal. He's absolutely gorgeous and into everything, which meant that I had to tidy up my sewing room. And, uh, and one of the things was there were pins everywhere. <sighs> naughty, right, naughty. But it was easy because I just got my magnetic pin cushion, and this happened. <laughs> Uh, actually with sound effects and that was it I knew that it was safe done pins out of the way done put in a drawer sorted no problem it is superb they were all over my work desk I was such such a mess we've had the electricians in as well and they just they take over my workroom because it's where all the electric boards and stuff are so um I just hadn't got in there but now if you've got different types of pins get a couple and sort your pins Wee! I love it. Look, it gets it. It is one of those things that people uh, keep next to them. Now, this is the thing, okay? How many times do you see our guests? And they'll be taking, they'll be sewing away, sewing away, taking a pin out, and then having to accurately put a pin into something. Whereas here, if you just send it in its general direction, it just grabs it. So it does, it saves a little bit of time, bit of effort, and even if you miss, it doesn't matter, just hoover them up afterwards with your magnetic pincushion. Um, I've got one, producer Paul's mum's got one. Absolutely love it. And for 4 49 it's one of those incredibly useful gadgets. Um, I would say also that this isn't just for pins. Um, I would say also maybe if you've got someone who uh, does a little bit of DIY, because there's nothing worse than having sort of nuts and bolts and things and having those flying around the place. You could always cup a couple of those on those. Now, the whaty whats? The llama fix, this. <laughs> now this is one of those funny old things that we, we get it on the air and I guess, what on earth is that? This is called llama fix. You get a meter of it. Um, and it's basically so that you can laminate your fabrics. So if you don't fancy, um, you know, having to wait for something to dry like your Odie coat, this is another way of getting that sort of laminate effect. Um, and it, uh, it, it, it doesn't work into the fibres like that. It sits on the top of the fabric and you just press it on. Uh, we've done shows where we've done a great big travel wash bag where the, it's, just, it's just gone on. Uh, this is from Visaline and it's Lamafix. So if you watch back it was the victoria pete and i did a show with this on uh, make sure you've got your teflon pressing cloth and and get pressing and then and it just gives you can't wash it though so that's where eau de coat has the edge on that you can't necessarily wash this one uh, but it is great if you just want that that quick waterproof lining on something and it's just 449 right now another very useful little item ah it's here We're limited on this, but everyone should have some. And this is Fray Check. So, your mum used it on her carpet. What a great idea. She cut off a bit of carpet for a rug. Yeah, 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 just to wipe your feet on. She just put it around the edge to stop it from fraying. What a great idea. Um, yeah, 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 no, carpet, carpet fibers are big. Okay, so small but mighty. This is your fray check. Uh, we should get producer Paul's mum on the show, shouldn't we? With all these handy little tips and hints. Um, and basically, it's very easy to use. Let me get my, uh, my fabric out here. So, maybe you've cut something and you just, you just don't want that fraying. Or maybe you're using um, a, a linen or a, a poly or something that's going to fray a little bit. All you do is take it out and just dab it on the edge and that will stop it from fraying. 
it will dry clear and that will be it. So it, use it within your seam allowance and then you don't have to worry about it fraying when you wash it or anything like that or coming away, especially if you've got to handle things a lot. If it's a fabric that's a little bit tricky, just pop some fray check on. It's really handy stuff, really handy stuff. Or if you're like me, before I got my stripology and, uh, and my sewing was a little, my cutting was a little bit wonky, uh, then sometimes when I was sewing sort of strips together, I'd go a little bit well, it would be super scant. Let's call it a super scant seam allowance. Um, and if your fabric frays, then you end up with a hole. So I would just go over with a little bit of fray check and make sure that that never happened. So it's, it's belt and braces, really. It's fab stuff. One of your favorite gadgets, Paul, what's that? The thread cutter. Oh, yes, the thread cutter. Producer Paul loves this um, because it's safe and he's, he's one for safety. Uh, you can just wear it around your neck. And then, because I worry when people put little snips around their neck so that they've always got something to cut thread with. That worries me a little bit. But with this, you've got like a, like a sort of, a, almost like a rotary cutter blade around there. Uh, I'm just trying to see if we've got any, any thread to hand. We have used wool with this and, uh, and it's, just gone, it's just gone through an absolute treat. I'm just frantically saying, oh, here we go. So for example, here we go. This is something that we had on yesterday. If I just wanted to trim back a thread. Oh, I've used this for a lot of demos, this piece. It's been very handy. So there we go. I just want to tidy that up. Oh, oh pull it out. That's not very handy, is it? There you go. Done. Done. You're not having to worry, especially maybe you have little people in the house or something like that, and you don't want to have little scissors. It's just great. And a wool for uh, embroidery, but just keep it around your neck. And then you just, you've always got it. It's always there. Dink, dink, dink. And there it is, done. Very handy. And again, under a fiver for just a handy little thing. And you can wear it safely. That's the thing. It's all about safety. All, now I've got threads all over the place. Another handy little tool. Go on then. Oh, the foldable scissors. Oh, gosh, hang on. There we go. Uh, foldable scissors. What? Hang on. Oh, oh, oh. Sort out my microphone. There we go. We're all good. Um, now, foldable scissors. Pull them apart. And there they are. Ta da! Uh, I think these are especially useful if you do workshops or anything like that, because they just keep it safe. There's nothing worse than arriving at a workshop, rummaging around in the bottom of your bag, uh, to find, and, and just ouch, ouch, ouch. Um, so if, you, if you're someone that, plus they look like glasses, and that makes me giggle. Um, pull them apart. I'm easily pleased, aren't I? Uh, and there they are, done. Snip, 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 snip. And off you go, and again, under five pounds. Perfect, absolutely perfect. So a great little set of travel scissors or just keep them in your car so you've, got, you've always got a little pair of scissors. How handy is that? Pop them in, there we go. And that's at 4.99. Now, another favorite of mine. Oh, we do stock some good gadgets. This is the thing I remember when I first started, well, started back sewing, and there were so many new gadgets on the market, and I didn't know how they worked. And I used to go and hang out in my local haberdashery and just look a bit lost, hoping that someone might help me. Um, they didn't, they banned me and said, don't come back until you've had that baby. Uh, now this is your micro stitch tool. This is the smallest micro stitch tool on the market. So this is the size of your little stitches and we're gonna use it to baste our quilts. So if you don't like spray adhesives, if pinning is a bit faffy for you or you just don't like the fact you keep pricking yourself, um, if, um, if uh, safety pins just annoy you, this might be the way to go. There are so many different ways to base your quilts, but this is so quick and so easy. So what I've got here is a nice pointy end, and then these just feed through, and you pop that through your fabric. That is sharp, be careful. Um, and it just puts a little stitch into your fabric through your layers, so through your base layer, your wadding, and your, your patchwork top, and it holds everything in place, which is just fab. And then you can see where I've done a few here, and you just sew over the top of them. 
So you, there's no removing pins as you go. There's no pricking yourself as you try and manipulate a lot of fabric um, underneath the sewing machine. None of that. There's no trying to remove clips as you go or anything. They are in and they stay in until you have finished. And then if you want to remove them, you just you can either get a pair of tweezers or just your fingernails and you literally just pull them out like that. And that's it, gone. Done. That's it. So easy, easy, easy. Let me show how you, how it works and how fast it can be done. I'm going to start from this side and work across. So you just push that pin bit through there. And if I put it on its side there, then when I squeeze the trigger, there you go. Can you see that's it safely delivered? And that's that. There it is. Uh, and so I would just go along, baste, really fast, really easy. It's lovely and sharp. It just goes through. It's just incredibly quick. You get, now then, with this, you do get black and white ones, so you can use a contrasting color so you can see them to pull them out later. And like I say, you can either pull them out with your fingers, they, you know, they do just pull out like that, done, that's it, pulled out. Um, and as you can see, it makes no more mark than a pin. Easy, easy peasy. So this is everything that you're getting. Let's have a look. For $22.95, you will get the stitch tool. You get white and black refills as well. As seen on TV, yeah, there you go. $22.95, EWGQ51. That is your micro stitch, and that is the smallest um, stitch tool on the market. So absolutely fab, and just so over the top. And there it is, done. Now, I've also got, if I can find it. Oh, put the cap on it, thank you, yes. Remember to do that at home. Oh, I'm just trying to find it. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Okay, uh, but, 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 oh, the Clover Mini Iron. We haven't done that for a long time, have we? Wee! We haven't seen this for ages uh, because we've been using our other, other little tool. But let me show you this one because it is, it is handy. Oh, yeah, Joe Carter loves this, doesn't she? But then you see, it's all about the toys, isn't it? So I've got all sorts of accessories for it. So let's start off at the very beginning. What is it? It is a mini iron. Um, it comes with various different feet. This is the one that comes with it, I think, as standard and then you can get whichever, whichever size you want. So you would change it by just unscrewing that and then putting a different foot in. Um, but that's your, that's your foot of your iron. You've got different heat settings there, so high, low and off. So then as you go, it's great for getting into those little spots. Um, if you've got a little mitered edge or anything that you really want to get into, look at that, you can really get in there. Toy making, perfect. Those really, really awkward bits with your dressmaking, but you can absolutely get, get in there. Absolutely get in there. So, you know, maybe you've done, you've got that you want to get in, and get those seams pressed out, then you can absolutely do that. Or if you've just bought your loop pressing, you see they even have this on the front, don't they? They even use this on the front. So if you're using your loop presser, then you can pop that in, press out the side there, and then you can just go in and press as you do, this isn't turned on obviously, so it's not pressing, but that, you know, that's, that's what you can do. So you can use them in conjunction. Um, that's the standard foot that it comes with. Let me show you, here's the packet. That's everything that it comes with. And it also comes with a little rest so that you don't burn anything. And that is 49.99. Now, the different adapters that we've got, we've got three different ones to show you today. Um, and this is, I'm going to start with the leg one. 
So I've got, I've got this one here, which is absolutely fab for your toy legs. So I think this is why Joe Carter loves it, because look at that, you can really get into all those fiddly little angles, and for just $8.99, you've got that slim line tip. So it's gonna work into all those little feet, all those little loops if you're dressmaking, can really press them out, perfect. And that's just $8.99. Uh, then, put that into, whoops, one side. This is the larger of the feet. So this easily fits onto the mini iron. It's large size, well, in terms of mini, it's larger size. So giving a more efficient pressing for slightly larger areas. But again, with that tip there that's really going to get in, especially if you've got mitered edges and things like that that you really want to make sure are nice and crisp and perfect, then it's absolutely perfect for that. There we go, that's $8.99. Now we've also got the ball foot ball tip sorry now this is great if you've got anything that you're working with in three dimension okay so um, if you're doing dolls and flowers and things like that then you can really get in and work work those so it's just it's just a very handy one to use we're quite limited on this one so if you do want the ball adapter tip please do pop that in your basket today it's 899 but it's just a very handy one to have now, also very handy to have, something that we use every day. And, uh, and in fact, we only got it in stock because, because you were asking at home for it. I, hang on a minute, that's really handy. Never thought of that. Never thought of not having to take my entire ironing board upstairs. This is your ironing mat. So, you know, it saves you. You can just work on, the t on your work surface. I think this is also great for people that live in smaller houses. You know, maybe you've got someone that's going off into student digs and they're not going to have space for an iron or something like that. This is great because they can just pop it on the work surface and, uh, and iron everything. It's also got grids as well. So if you're pressing seams, then you can, you can uh, press all your seams and you've got a guide there to work with. And also if you're doing your bias binding, then you've got your 45 degree line. You can wash this as well, but then also if you just want that reflective um, layer so that it just reflects the heat straight back in, so you're getting like a double bubble press, tick, 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 then you've got that side as well if you want to use that side. It's incredibly useful, and for just $24.99, um, it's one of those things that we, we use it here all the time. Every day we use ours, and it's been absolutely brilliant. So pop that in your basket. It's just $24.99, and uh, save yourself a little bit of space. Fold it up, pop it down the side. Job done. Now, I've also got this, ooh, mag magnetizing to everything. Uh, this little natty item. Now, this, small but mighty, is a magnetic seam guide. You'll often hear a lot of our guests say, um, that I'm working on such and such a seam allowance or it's a different seam allowance to what I'm used to using. I would, if I'm doing this a lot, I would often mark this with tape on my machine, but that can get sticky. So this is a magnetic seam guide. So you would just pop that on the top of your machine at whatever distance you wanted. And then your fabric is just gonna slide along there. So it's giving you, um, it's giving you basically a, a, an amplified seam guide so that your seam is just gonna run along there and it's giving you that extra accuracy. Now, um, this is great for mechanical machines. If you've got a computerized machine, you use it at your own risk. That's manufacturers have to say that because that's what manufacturers say um, because it has a magnet in it. There you go, it's as simple as that. Um, but there you go, it's a really handy little seam guide. 3.99, perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, now, now. Oh, oh, these. Bodkins. Everyone loves a bodkin, right? You get two in a pack. Funny looking little things, but incredibly useful. I don't know about you, but 
it's, it's those fiddly things, isn't it? It's trying to thread elastic through when you've made a, paid, a pair of PJs or something like that, or a drawstring and a drawstring bag, trying to thread those sorts of things through. If you're using elastic, you just thread your elastic into there and pull it up until it's caught tightly um, in there, like, like tweezers. And then you push that through, so you've always got something to hold on to. It's not like using a safety pin where it comes undone and pricks you halfway around. Uh, you just push that through, so you've always got something to, to grip onto. And then you pull your elastic through, pull it off, tie it off, done, it's in there. Um, if you have something finer that you need to take through, then this is the one. You grip it there. Now this is like tweezers, grip. And then tighten that through. And then again, once you've got that gripped, you can then push through. Uh, you can also the, use this for turning through seams and things as well. It's just a natty little gadget and it's just $1.99. And then you can just keep it on your magnetic pincushion so you always know where it is. Ha ha! There you go. There's your bodkin. Now, oh, ouch. Uh, let's see. I have some wonder clips. Oh, then I want to do that because that's brilliant too. Uh, okay, now, jumbo wonder clips. <laughs> We've even sealed the packet with one. In fact, I realized the other day I came to wear with my hair pinned back with a wonder clip. They're really useful. 12 of these in a pack. Um, let's just talk about one here. So this is your wonder clip. When you're doing your binding on your quilts or if you're working with a fabric like an oilcloth, say, or a faux leather where you don't want to put a pin through and mark that fabric, your clips are your go-to and your best friend. You can see there they've got just little grips in there, which just hold things gently in place. You can fit uh, layers of fabric underneath there if you're using it for your binding. But here's the thing, if you're sewing from the top through to the bottom with your binding, there's nothing more annoying than missing the, the binding underneath, having to unpick and go back in and re-sew. Now you don't need to because here you've got your uh, quarter inch markers, so you know how far you've clipped that binding underneath so that you know that if you go within that seam allowance when you sew that you will not have missed any of that binding so it is incredibly useful to use um, and it's just a, a very handy piece of kit it has been well thought um, we think we might be able to get better shot of those markings for you so you've got a quarter inch half a quarter inch half inch three quarters of an inch and an inch marked on there. So it just, it's just another of those aids that's really helpful and you'll find your own uses for it. Um, but it's just a clever, clever piece of kit. We like it. These are your jumbo big ones. So M-O-G-Q 84 and that's 12 99 made by Clover. And you just get a great big packet of them there like that. Ta-da! Uh, we've also got the little itty billy ones. These are great because you never, you're never going to lose those. Oh! Nope, have a look at that in a minute. Um, here we go. These are limited. So a pack of 10 for 7 99 with your Wonder Clips. The joy of these is that they're bright green. And I don't know how many of you sew in fluorescent green. I would suggest possibly not all of you all the time. So they are generally very easy to find and then remove. So these are your itty bitty ones. These are incredibly useful. When I, I did one of the um, tablet covers, and that had really tiny binding on, and I used tiny wonder clips, dink, dink, dink. Uh, and again, you've got the markers on the back for your different measurements so that you can make sure that you are sewing in the appropriate place. 10 of those. Now, a uh, message from, oh, it's gone. Um, I think it was Penny. And this is about the loop turner. And she said, at my sewing group, the print turning set are a great success. I have helped so many, says Penn. Yes, yes, it's brilliant. If you missed it earlier, here's what it does. Or if you've never seen it before, it is superb. If you need to turn any loop of any size, you get three different sizes of loop turner, including rouleau loops. Um, 
just insert that tube there and again that's 22 inches of fabric there Oop. and then pop the edge in there push it through how easy is that uh, Lucy Dawes says, morning Taz, you're looking lovely today. Well, thank you very much, Lucy. Uh, watching at home, snuggle with two of my girls, Lillian. Oh, it's Lillian Hattie's mum, Lucy. Oh, hello. Uh, While well, the rest sleeping, uh, please can you say hi to them? Hello, girls. Good morning. Are you on half term? Are you being good? Are you being good? Mm. Uh, hang on, let me just pop that in there. Bing, 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 bing. Let me just turn this through. I can't leave, leave this the wrong way through. There you go. Uh, right, let me pop those loops. I always keep this in a in a one of those so that I know where it is. There you go. Now, uh, here we go. This is your 505 spray. Now, this is a temporary adhesive spray. So if you love to bind your, if you love to uh, baste, sorry, your quilts together before you sew them with a temporary adhesive spray, this is the one to go for. 7.99 AJGQ05, or maybe you're doing a plique and you just want to temporarily um, stick something, stick your your um, your applique on, and then was to hold it just whilst you sew round. It will wash out afterwards. You can reapply it so that it's not just it's tacky basically so you can just keep reapplying it so that if if you don't put your patchwork down flush first of all you can reapply it uh, and get that lovely smooth finish so 7.99 there ajgq05 now i've spoken about making uh, about binding with the clips but what about making your own binding this is our most popular size so this is your Clover Bias Tape Maker. This is 25 mil. So 25 mil, you would have to cut a 50 mil, that's two inch wide piece because it then curves through there. This here is 25 mil. So that, that will have your fabric, if you will, folded in half. And then the finished width of your bias binding, uh, once it's applied to your project, will be 12 mil. You'll see 12 and a half mil uh, because you'd fold it in half. But that is your bias binder maker. Incredibly useful and handy to use. Uh, don't do what I did. I tried a cheaper one, um, thinking that they were just all the same. I just needed one and I saw one. Should have got this because this is, I've used this so many times on the shows and absolutely love it. It works every single time. Can I get my one at home to work? No. Should have just bought this straight off. Uh, now, a multi thread organizer. Here we go. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Ah, now this will do your larger size threads as well. So there we go. You've got all of those sizes in there. I think this is 36 or something like that. You can, you, it holds a lot. 30, sorry, 30. 30 mini cones of embroidery thread or 50 spools. Uh, now you can see these little dents in there are so that if you want to stack them, your feet will go into there and it's not going to shift around. Um, actually keeps the dust off your threads. I don't know, th those, those colours that we've, we've bought but we don't use quite so often, then we come to use them and they're a bit dusty. <coughs> uh, easy to wipe clean, keeps your threads clean as well. $14.99, you can easily see what you've got inside. Um, just, there you go. There they all are. So, and this will hold your larger spools as well, which is fab. $14.99. Uh, Make the most of your PMP. Uh, remember, it is just one PMP of $2.95 per day. Now, um, here we go fabric marker. Uh, this is your So Easy fabric marker. That's your vanishing fine line marker. We do use these. This is air erasable. That's a fine tip there. The ink is non-toxic and soluble. Can be removed with soapy water, should be. All I would say though, with if you're using any new pen on a fabric, do just double check, do a little tester first. And that's our air erasable pen. There you go, easy. Ah, the bobbin ring, yes. We like to call it the donut, don't we? Now, uh, this is rubbery. 
and it stores all your little bobbins in there. In fact, where have all the bobbins gone? We used to have loads in here. Um, and, uh, and it's great because if you have smaller size ones or anything like that, you can just put this in warm water and, and you, can, you can mold it to the size that you want. Uh, so it's quite malleable. Uh, then when you pop them in, I always make sure that my thread is just caught on there so that it doesn't unravel at all. And it just holds everything. It's really handy. Take it wherever you like, have it there, fits them all in. You can turn it upside down and shake it. They don't fall out. They are held because it's rubbery. And again, for 9 99 it's just a handy little thing. And you can fit loads in there. Yes, yes. Now, and this is the first time I think we've brought this to air. For me, it is. This is the first time I've brought this to air. Uh, this is a fabric stabilizer. It's got, it's got, there we go, let me move that down. It's similar to a starch, basically. You can use it for your embroidery fabric. Uh, you can use it if you're doing things like macrame, felt, lace, anything like that. It basically puts texture into your fabric. Um, so if you're doing something where you're having to manipulate the fabric a lot, you don't want it fraying, this will help reduce your fraying. Um, also, things like... Um, Oh, uh, buh, 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 buh. when you do your quilt as you goes and you have to starch your fabric first, you can use this. You can also use it on your ribbons and lace and all those sorts of things. It's a handy little bottle to have. There you go. Uh, the whatty, whatty, whatty. I, oh, this, this one. Now, this is great. In fact, this has just reminded me that I need to get one. Um, how often do you go to try and find a tape measure and you haven't got one. This has got an adhesive back to it. So you've got your 150 centimeters and you just stick it onto your workbench. So all I would do is take off the adhesive back, pop it along here, and then I'm always going to have that tape measure to measure stuff on. I need, I need a couple of these actually. A 2.99, yeah, you can't go wrong, can you? Now, CL is up after the break. Oh, yes. Um, she's bringing us a sophisticated crepe dress. So stay tuned because we've got a double whammy with CL. One at nine, one at 11, and I will see you in a few short moments. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Tune in on Friday the 1st of June at 11am where we'll be stocking the new Elner Experience 550, 560 and 570 sewing machines. With up to 50 stitch combinations and 15 variable needle positions, these machines are perfect if you love easy, speedy sewing. These all-round machines will handle an array of different fabrics with ease, ensuring you get all of the enjoyment out of your next project. So tune in on Friday the 1st of June from our brand new time of 9am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687. Tune in on Saturday the 2nd of June at 10am to see Nicola Dodd's Auriculous Quilt Kit. Previously featured in today's quilter, this delightful design is perfect for all quilters alike. The patchwork style, which accentuates the pale, soft tone colours, is ideal to show off your skills. And with two colour options, what's not to love? Choose from morning or midnight colour palettes. This delicate design is perfect for any room in your home, and with this quilt you can enjoy the blossoming flowers all year long. Join Nicola Dodd on Saturday the 2nd of June at 10am. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687. Join Jane Alcock at 12pm on Sunday the 3rd of June with her Georgetown Carnival Quilt. Create vibrant, colourful circle blocks with this clever design. Originally featured in Love Patchwork and Quilting, the bold, fun style of this gorgeous quilt shows its pure uniqueness. Our kit comes with a colourful rainbow of solids, so you can choose all your favourite colours and turn them into this fabulously funky carnival quilt. So tune in to see Jane Alcock create this fabulous Georgetown Carnival Quilt on Sunday the 3rd of June at 12pm, only on Sewing Quarter. Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687. Finally, we can start spreading the news. From Friday the 1st of June, we are going to be changing our hours. And I think you're going to like it. First of all, we're going to be switching on our live on-air light at the slightly later time of 9am. So that gives you an extra hour for breakfast in bed. 
But even better than that, we are going to be live through until 2 p.m. So that's an extra hour on air live, giving us five whole hours of dressmaking, sewing, quilting, seven days a week. So join us live on air for five whole hours from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., seven days a week from the 1st of June. Join Jane Alcock at 12 p.m. on Sunday the 3rd of June with her Georgetown Carnival Quilt. Create vibrant, colourful circle blocks with this clever design. Originally featured in Love Patchwork and Quilting, the bold, fun style of this gorgeous quilt shows its pure uniqueness. Our kit comes with a colourful rainbow of solids, so you can choose all your favourite colours. So see, the first hour, we're going to concentrate on the dress. The second hour, we're going to concentrate on the jacket. So it's, um, it's, the, it's the whole ensemble here that we're going to be working our way through. It's one pattern, has all of this. Let me spin this around so you can see. Lovely. Look at that. Super spanky. The wedding season is upon us, well and truly. So without further ado, we're going to concentrate on the dress this hour. There we go. Right. Uh, so for if you want the pattern, I have it as ever in two sizes for you. Let's have a look at the first size. Um, now, I've got this in, which size, which one is this? 14 to 22. So if you want this in 14 to 22, then here it is. That will take you up to a bust size of 40. Absolutely lovely. Uh, we'll just sort out the graphics for that. This is the dress. This is the half of it. There we go. This is for the smaller size. But there she is, looking gorgeous. A little zip in there. And we're going to be going through all of this in just one moment. Now, I've got crepe for you, all sorts of different crepes. Uh, let's start with the Kingfisher colour here. That's this one that we've worked with here. Here it is. Now, this is a Samba crepe, which means that it's got kind of stretch in four ways. Four way stretch there. Now, if you would like this per half a meter, and CL will talk us through exactly how much you need for each part, uh, then $6.99 per half a meter for your Kingfisher Blue, which I think is a stunning color. That's gonna look lovely, whatever, whatever color you are. I think it's a really versatile one. Lovely, so nice bit of stretch there. Nice bit of stretch there. Um, $6.99 for your Samba stretch. Now, uh, ba -ba -ba. Right, that is your Kingfisher Blue. Let's have a look at the other, which is kind of a tealy colour. Oh, you can't do anything yet. What would you like? What? Do you know what? Our graphics have crashed for a moment. They're having a moment. So we're going to go over. We're going to start the demo and we'll come back and we'll go through all of this. And then by then, we'll know how much fabric we need. Oh, the joy of live TV. Oh, Hi, oh, welcome. Oh, so, it's lovely to have you on the show. It's such a joy to meet you. I've heard so much about you. Well, same. And actually, we realised this morning that our, our paths have crossed. A lot. A lot in the past, and yet we've never... never I can't believe we were probably in the same office, though, in yes. Stratford yes. at the same time. We both worked yeah. for the Royal Shakespeare Company in the wardrobe department, and, and I worked in production as well. And yeah. Just... How did that... How, how did know. we never meet? <laughs> but here we are. But here we are. Yay! Perfect. <laughs> um, now, wedding season. Yeah. I think office. I think it's a really good office kind of a dress. But I think it's one of those that you might want to wear on a Friday, you know, day yes. to night. Yes. Cheeky little change little of jewellery. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Splash of lippy. Yeah. Off you go. And the jacket, which we're going to do in the second hour, I think it's a nice little throw over because some of us don't like wearing sleeveless unless we've got to the party you want to keep your arms covered <laughs> got to the party and had a couple of drinks yeah and that's right yeah, yeah 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 and the lights are dim uh, yeah <laughs> by that stage it's fine uh, but until then we like to th keep yeah. things covered uh, and also if you're in a church exactly. or anything like that for a wedding you know you, you should be want to be 
flashing the flesh around no. everywhere. So uh, this is absolutely perfect for those. I think also great for office wear when you, you know, dress to impress, all those sorts of things. It just is great. Kids graduation, yeah. anything Very where cool. that smarter look yeah. is a job interview. <gasps> yeah. Mm. In fact, because uh, um, a lot of people will know that obviously you were, you were very instrumental with the Great British Sewing Bee. I was. Mm. <laughs> uh, we can't say how in, instrumental. <laughs> um, well, I was the sewing producer, so I was the behind the scenes person developing sewing content for the show. Excellent. Designing and then writing books. Writing books. About it. Writing bits of sewing tech for the script, um, designing all the patterns, getting all the instructions written. Yeah. It's fair to say you've got a good pedigree. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but before that, like John, I've been a costumer for <coughs> 25 years. <coughs> a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just one yeah, or two. Recently. One or two. <laughs> um, so being able to make your own clothes yeah. is, is one of those things I think makes us feel really good. It does. As long as we can do it well exactly because we wait for that compliment of i love it where did you get it yeah um actually i've got the pattern at home and this pattern is brand new today uh, it's 14.99 and we're going to show you all the juicy bits yeah so it's i think it's a great pattern if you look at the kind of seam line so it's got princess seaming which goes over the bust and that's great to get a really <laughs> nice fit so I've made this uh, to a straight size 12, straight out of the packet. I haven't yeah. done any tweaking, any CL-ness, which I sometimes do. <laughs> um, no CLing. <laughs> no <has occurred>. CLing. <laughs> but can you see that those smooth curved lines, they just skim the waist, and it's a great way of getting better shape around the bust, especially if, like me, you might have more at the front than, than maybe the pattern's designed for. So <laughs> I really like a princess seam over a dart if you've got boobs. It's, it's also, it's very flattering, it isn't is. it? And it's fully lined as well. I mean, so, sorry, ladies, just <laughs> hoiking up her skirt here. A bit rude, isn't it? It um, is. But fully lined as well. It is. Which is... It just gives it that extra bit of something, especially with an anti-static, because it just helps the dress just kind of drape <sighs> over your body. It skims. Exactly. Sometimes we just need... A bit of skimming, mm. especially on something that's going to be a close-fitting item exactly. like this. And nice. also, with any kind of dress like this, it gives it that bit of weight. And it's, it's that thing we've gotten so used to clothes that have got no substance, that putting your own lining in just kind of anchors the dress, I think. Yes, because people don't wear petticoats necessarily no. that much anymore. So to actually have an inbuilt lining... Fabulous. Yeah, perfect. Really nice. Um, and we will get back to those fabrics in one <laughs> moment. But we're going to start okay. and make a start. Now, um, your highlighter has been out. My highlighter has been out because... Why? Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about when you cut this out. So um, if you can see, we've got all these multi-sizes. Yes. Yeah. Now, on this section, it kind of grows evenly out like that. Okay. Yeah, so the largest side is on the outside, the largest size is on the outside. It's as you would suspect, assume. expect yeah. and assume, yes. But when we come to these curved bust sections, uh. the largest side is on the outside over here. Yeah. But over here, the largest size is on the inside. Mm. Mm. Didn't so, expect that. No, so it'd be really easy to cut the wrong size. Yes. I'm saying that because I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking from, from experience. experience yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So why is that actually? Why? Because I would expect, you know. It's to do with the incremental growth in grading. It's really boring. Okay. Yeah. So basically, um, don't like always assume that they're in the same spot. It, it would be an assumption I would yeah. make. So. It's because you grow actually more at the side seam than you might do over the bust seam. Okay. So, um, that kind of doesn't seem to make sense, but it does. But yeah. it, just, it just is. So my idiot guide is to get a highlighter and make sure that I highlight the size I want to cut. Uh, I'm all for an idiot guide. <laughs> all for an idiot guide. <laughs> idiot guide me up. Um, now, the other thing. Yes, this, this little thing yeah. here. So I just want to talk a little bit about the pattern size and how you can really fine tune the fit. Okay. So based on the mannequin, so I made this to fit her, um, I should have cut a 14. 
based on the mannequin's measurements. Right. So then my second step, and all the sizing is on the back of the envelope there. And if you're buying this today, take a look on the website and see which size you are. Yeah. Go buy your own your yeah, own measurements. Your, your body measurements. And for a dress, your bust is kind of important. Yes. You can tweak the skirt, but sort of make sure it's the right size at the bust. So when I came to the finished garment measures, yes. and that's what these, did you call them hieroglyphics? Hieroglyphics, <laughs> yes. Your dress making hieroglyphics. You know what I mean. So this symbol here means it's a body measurement. Right. So you can see that there's one here, and then there's also one at the waistline, mm -hmm. and over on here we've got one at the hips. Okay. So when I look at the size 14 yeah at the bust so she measures 34 and a half mm. inches no, I think it's about 12 last time I did yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so when I look at the 14 which is what I thought I should be cutting yeah it says it's 39 and a half inches now that's as if I've taken the dress from the mannequin laid it flat and measured it okay finished garment measures so that means over and above her bust size this is going to be four inches bigger that's quite a lot, it given is. that there's a little bit of give in this fabric exactly. as well. Exactly, and also you want to show off your shape a little bit, don't you? Yeah. yeah. So um, this is a, a taste thing, but on a dress like this that should be semi-fitted, I looked at the 12, so that's a 37 and a half, and that's about three inches. That gives you a bit of wiggle room yes. for dancing. Yes, um, And that's why I chose to cut the 12. Okay. Yeah. And that, that's the top tip, isn't it? Because yeah. you don't want to have to go and you have done all your seams. But then you did also say with this, make a twine. Yeah. So when you're working with crepe, it's a really lovely fabric. It's very luxurious, but it marks. Right. So if you stitch all these seams, you have to unpick them and then repress them. You're going to get all these track marks and it's going to ruin your lovely cloth. So just make a twirl. Make sure you get a really nice fit that you're happy with. And then you can pretty much get your head down get on the sewing with it. machine. No, yeah. Oh, nice. OK. Yeah. And also, I don't know about you, but the second time that I make something, it's always easier yeah. and it's always a, a better finished article. Um, how much fabric do I need is the next thing I okay, need to know. So for the whole lot, you and the biggest size, if you want to make the, the whole suit, you need five metres. OK. Uh, maybe four and a half. I would say for the dress, you could get it out of two metres. OK. So it's one of those things you probably buy a bit more. Yeah and then you can always make something else with it. Well, yeah, it's nice to have that it little is, matching yeah. something, isn't there? So five metres. For those of you that are going, well, how do I do that? Um, when you pick the fabric that you want, you just, um, it's available by the half metre and we will cut you one long continuous length. So five metres is going to be 10 half metre units. So you yeah. just put 10 in your quantity and off you go. Uh, now, just to let's see okay. how it is to you. No, yes. You go for fabric. I'm going to go and have a quick look at fabric. So cool. just sorry I'm about that. I'm going to make noises with the machine. You so. make noises. You you make whatever <laughs> noises you like. Well, you know, within reason. <laughs> Remember, we're live, of course. Um, right, we've done the Kingfisher. Let's start then. Well, where do you want to start, Chispel? Here we go. Now, this is your black. I've got two different blacks for you. Uh, so if you want your black Samba, that's this one here. And this again, your Samba is your four way stretch. Uh, remember, so that way, that way. Um, and that is 6.99 per half a meter. I have another black one for you, which is a lighter, a lighter crepe. So if you would like that one, I'll get you the details for that. And again, these are all lovely and wide. That's what we want, lovely and wide. And this is your triple crepe. And this is 649. It's 150 centimeters wide. It's 100% polyester, uh, but it's just, it's got that lovely drape. It's got enough weight that it's gonna fall beautifully. Now, uh, the next one is that, oh, this is new. This is brand new. Uh, we were trying to describe how it felt because it feels amazing. Um, and we started off going, is it sort of suede? No, it feels like a peach skin. And it, look at the drape on that. Is that not just beautiful? This is brand new today. This is lipstick, pink plain, luxury lightweight crepe. Um, and it's $4.99. It's more of a crepe de chine, we decided. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Um, and it's what, sorry, for? 175 GSM, if that helps anyone. 100% polyester, but just look how fabulous that's going to look 
Nice. $4.99, brand new today. Uh, now, let's have a look at the silver crepe here. Again, this is your heavier weight crepe. But again, it's, just, it's, it's getting that fall, isn't it? It's getting that weightiness. Uh, so your four-way stretch here with your Samba crepe, and that is $6.99. Let's rush through these. So just to give you options, because you know you might have a favorite bag or something, or just a color that you think is just really works for you. Uh, let's have a look at the violet. Oh no, hang on, let me just check. It is, it is this one, isn't it? Yeah. Here we go, I've got two different purples. There we go. Again, this is $6.99 for your violet stretch. This is the one we're demoing in, isn't it? Oh, the magenta. The magenta is the one that we're demoing in. That's magenta then. Sorry, I've picked up the wrong one. Are they calling that magenta? Let me show you the violet. That's the one we used. Yeah, yeah. They've called it something. So this colour here. Hang on. Get our colours right. Oh, they just call it purple. Oh, they've called this one Sapphire. Gosh. So that's your Sapphire stretch, and that's $6.99. No, it's not Sapphire. That's your Sapphire there. That's your Sapphire. Here we go. This is your Sapphire one. Let's get these colours right. That's your Sapphire. Producer Paul's having to work from a very small picture up there. I'm going, no, this one, this one. This is your Sapphire stretch. That's a good colour, actually. That sapphire is always very... Well, <laughs> there we go. We will... There we go. Come back and have a look at these. I want to get on with the demo. But basically, have a look on our website. Underneath where we're live, all of these will come up and you'll be able to pick which colour you want because I've got a whole array, but I've also got a demo that we need to get starting. Right, this is your Kingfisher, this one here. And this one here is... Magenta? Magenta, yes. Or violet. <laughs> we'll get that. We'll get that sorted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now. So I think I wanted to show you how to do these princess seams. Okay. Because um, some of my students really struggle with this. Right. And I think it's because you've got two opposing curves. Didn't you used to teach math? Oh, yeah, back Long in the day. Um, so you've got two curves that are different shapes. So basically, we've got one curve here. And yes. this is actually a little longer than here. And we've got to make these two fit together. And they don't look like they fit together, do they? <laughs> <laughs> but they do. And this is what gives you that lovely round shape when we come to stitch it. This is the bit that scares a lot of people. It is. I say that because me, <laughs> basically. Um, because I look at it and go, oh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm worried it's going to ruck and ruffle and just not be lovely and smooth. Yeah. So um, what I've done, and I think you might be able to see it because I did it in a contrast thread, is I've put a stay stitch along here. Yes. Now, this Samba works really well for princess seams because okay. it's got that little bit of stretch. You can Does get that make away. it a little bit more forgiving? Yeah. I like that. You can kind of squish it. Yeah. Nice. So um, we could clip into this. If I was working with, say, a linen that's a bit more rigid, I might just clip into this to make it fit. So I'm just going to pin one side so you can see I've marked the wrong side because idiot guys. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it, it is one of those it's, things. To me, it looks the same it from does. both sides. Yeah. But there's the roll guide, isn't there, where if you pull it... If it rolls towards you? Yeah, it, I mean, I just kind of pick a side and stick with it. Oh, do you? That's, yeah. that's how you go with it? Yeah. Go with that then, <laughs> easier. <laughs> so, um, it's kind of important when you do a princess seam that you really mark your notches. So, can you see, I mark my notches with just a little slit. Yes. Now, if you're not comfortable doing that, you can cut out a little triangle, but just don't cut too much. I forget. So I have to cut into the fabric because yeah. otherwise I forget. I know some people are really good at doing them out. Yeah. I don't find that very accurate because it's actually really awkward to go around that bump. So I always just cut in and it's just a little nick. And then there is somewhere down here another one that is going to help. There, there we is. go. I think there's, yeah. And that one is going to match down here. Yeah? Yeah. So um, to get started, I generally. So you've only stay stitched one of these? One side. Okay. 
and it's the side that is likely to be longer. Right. So I'm just going to match up. Now, these seams look like they don't match, but yes. trust me, they do. Um, <laughs> there is a little circle that, on the pattern that you could put. So I'm just going to line that up like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I like to pin horizontally. Okay. But if you, especially when I'm easing, but if you feel more confident, you should pin that way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't really matter which way you do, but then I'm going to just find that little notch. And I'm finding the corresponding one here. Right. So you start by getting these notches lined up. Is that is that is the trick then to, yeah. to go notch to notch exactly yeah. where they say. And when you look, can you see that this side is shorter than that side? Yes. So a trick is always to have the longer side, the side you're easing, mm -hmm. underneath. Okay. Because the feed dogs grip it and it doesn't slide along as much. Ah. So usually whenever I sew a garment, I always sew from the top of the body down. Right. But on the opposite side of this, would I'd break my rule so that I can have the it. eased side underneath. And that will just help give that lovely smooth yeah. finish. Um, so if you are after the magenta fabric, this is this one, and it is $6.99 per half a metre. That's a good price. It is a good price, yeah. isn't it? It's a really good price. And if you want the whole shebang with the jacket and everything, then you're looking at five metres of fabric. Maximum for the biggest size. So I managed to get the 12 out of under four metres. That's amazing, it isn't is. it? Uh, it really is. When you think about how much you would pay for a fitted, Sally. beautifully tailored dress. Phew. So I've, more than that. I've, got, <laughs> I've got that notch there. And then I find my second notch here. And I match those two up. Okay. Now, um, my description for how I put ease in is I'm going to use a bit of kind of finger feels. Okay. <laughs> All right. So between these two points, I'm just going to find the center and find the center and kind of squish mm -hmm. and then pin. So this is why the horizontal pinning helps. And if you look at it from the top, you can see whether it's even or not. Okay. So I want to maybe slide that a little bit. Then between those two points, I'm going to squish the yeah. middle. So you're just sectioning it off, yeah. halving, halving, halving. And I'm sort of bending the outer side around because this is shorter. So this yeah. is the only bit of maths I got at school. Okay. This thing's related to sewing. So I want, the, <laughs> I want the circumference to get shorter. So if I do this and find the middle, then it the does. outer edge is longer. Yes, absolutely. I failed maths. <laughs> But excelled in, in sewing. In sewing. Although I wasn't allowed to do sewing at school. Why not? Because I got too excited and I used to finish all my projects early. <laughs> you used to actually do your work. And then they wouldn't give me anything else to do. So I used to be a bit chatty <laughs> and disruptive. <laughs> okay, so between these points, we've then got a little bit more easing. Now I know that the... Oh, yeah, look at the, you've got, yeah, oh, there's all sorts going on this there. This curve is where you want the ease. So you want the most amount of ease to sort of flower around where you're fullest. Okay. Yeah. That's a lovely so, description. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to kind of focus on sort of this area now. So does that mean that you're not so worried um, down there that, that no. you want... But I can kind of, you want that if there. I find this gets too bumpy, I can kind of slide it along. Okay. So don't be afraid to kind of move this. Some people get really stuck in matching notches. Okay. And it doesn't really matter. So then I'm going to come... I think I would be because I'm not that confident yeah, at it. But you can kind of let it slide. And I always let things slide to the hem. Okay. Not up into where it will affect a neckline or an armhole. Okay. So between here and here... Mm -hmm. Again, I'm going to use that kind of, so I'm sliding my edges together. And now it's kind of the curves going the opposite way almost, isn't it? A little it? bit. So I'm just kind of bending to see where that fits. And again, if I release that, you can have a little look, see how much ease you've got. Does that make sense yes. looking in? Yes. So it's just a little bit of fine tuning, always making sure that the edges are lined up. This is one of those things, isn't it, where your preparation is going to denote uh, how exactly. how well yeah. the finished item works. Yeah. So the seams on that dress, it yes. took me, I don't know, maybe an hour to pin all of these seams, the vertical seams, really? on the lining and the dress, and then about 10 minutes to sew it. Prior but, and proper preparation. But then it took me maybe 40 minutes to press it. 
because pressing 40 is, minutes to yeah, press. because you want to press it really well to really like flatten down the seams and if you don't press this kind of fabric especially on a princess seam it's just going to look horrid okay so i just keep repeating that kind of halfway thing so i'm kind of using my fingers to feel mm -hmm. and if you're not confident you can put as many pins as you like in here okay so this is one of the seams that sometimes people like to baste or tack. Yes. I'm very rarely a tacker. Um, although and is that just a confidence thing? Did you used to? Yeah, I think it's because having trained professionally, we have to get our speed up. Uh, yeah. When I first went into a workroom, oh. <laughs> there yeah. is a set of times. Yes. And if you don't meet your timings, you don't get through your probation. Yes. So you learn pretty quickly. So sometimes if I was in a real hurry, I would stitch this with hardly any pins in it. Really? Um, just, and you soon learn. Yeah. But you learn the finger feels, I call it. Okay. So you can see I've got a lot less in the straighter yeah. section. I think it's the same as anything, isn't it? Pastry or anything like that. You get yeah. the feel. Um, you've got about 20 minutes. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, 25, sorry. 25. Okay. So... Then I'm going to stitch this. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you can see it's already created that lovely shaping. Yeah, no, it has. Yes. Okay. So this is just, do you want me to sew a little bit of the bumpy yeah. bit? Because I really want to show you the zip because okay. I know a lot of people are scared of zips and I've got a nice little trick. For it's this. as if you've, uh, you've read my mind this <laughs> morning and gone, right. Okay, so um, when I get this lined up, I'm going to use my 1.5 centimetre seam yes. allowance. And as I sew, I'm going to take it nice and easy. Now, you me. have gone for a... Um, for a, a, a machine that a lot of people will have at home, yeah. non-computerised, just a normal oh, mechanic. No, this one's oh, this slightly. One slightly. Oh, you yeah. went for this one in the end. Yeah, just because ah. we were struggling. Um, but it, it, it gives me heart because it means that actually you don't yeah. have to have an all singing, all dancing, whizzy, whizzy, whizzy machine. No, not at all. Okay. So I would have preferred to use a mechanical today because right. I uh, feel like I've got more control over it, particularly sewing standing up. And I find with the computerised ones, I often... Uh, I make it go too fast, and the computer says no. Like now. Oh, is it all? Is it all plugged in? Let's have a look. <laughs> you see, this is this is the joy, isn't it? Here we go. Uh, plugged that in. is plugged in. That is going down to there. That is going down to there. Why Ooh. does this? Not? Ah, there you go. Ah, thanks. <laughs> That's all right. It's the idiot, turn it off and on tip. again. Put it on so, yeah. in the power. So I'm just doing a little bit of reversing. <laughs> now I'm going to use my fingers almost like pins and I may even use the tip of my scissors. Okay. I think you've got something here called Derek the Dobber. Oh, yeah, where is Derek? Yeah, we but do somewhere. Somewhere <laughs> Derek is, use... is around and about. So if I hold my fingers like this, I can really grip the fabric. Now I'm going to do a cardinal sin. Go on. I'm going to sew over my pins. Okay. Okay. So it's a fine needle and these are fine new pins. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm quite happy to do this. But at home, if you're not confident, baste it. Okay. Okay. We don't have time to baste, hence no, the cardinal hence sin. hence the cardinal sin. Um, so this is how you learn to sew as a costumer, to go really fast. We sew over the pins. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until I came into home sewing that people said, oh, you shouldn't do it. But I think it's more as a beginner if you break a needle. It's yeah. really scary. Yeah. Okay, so do as I say and not as I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And take your pins out. Okay. But can you see the little tip of the scissor dauber? Just holds everything nice and flat. Yeah, no, absolutely. So and it's then, just having that extra, extra set that can get in yeah. nice and close, isn't it? Because you don't want your fingers too close in there. Because I hardly ever use a walking foot because I can control the fabric with my fingers or with my little scissors. Yeah. So we're on the home straight. Yeah. And we can power down this last little bit. You don't have to sew this quite as carefully because it's straight of grain. Yeah. So off you go. Now, I mean, this is the thing, isn't it? Because you've been a costumier, you've worked with all sorts of different types of fabric, and so you, mm -hmm. get, you get the feel for them all. And I know one of the things, having worked in the wardrobe department at the ROC, they, it had to be done 
as it would have been done back in the day. So there were no sort of concealed zips or anything. If, if you know, it would have been, no. a, it was all laced, it was all done. So it, it is about getting that exact finish. So actually working with all these different fabrics, mm -hmm. uh, you do have a great idea, which means that I can ask you very easily, what other fabrics could I make this dress oh. in? Well, I think that crepe de chine would work really well. Oh, I do too, yes. Yeah, it would give it a very different, less office -y, more party maybe. Yeah. So we'll just... Um, Anyway, we're just going to gloss over that. <laughs> this, is why, live TV. this is why you shouldn't chat on the phone. <laughs> so, uh, it's all right, it's iron off. It's iron off wax. But if anybody was going, what, what are they giggling about? Um, <laughs> see how very carefully marked her right sides and, and her, her wrong, wrong sides. <laughs> and, uh, and then we chatted. And sewed it inside um, out. But okay. luckily but it looks the same both you ways. You can so see. Now, the right. one thing, I'm not going to press it because we okay. want to move on to zip. But I think you've got a ham. So we do. Down there. Uh, where's it gone? So this is where I would recommend using a ham because we've got this curved seam. Yes. And just like we did um, when we were easing it, we want to press it with a little ease. Yes. So if I imagine that my hand is the ham, as I'm pressing, I can get a really nice curve. And depending on your shape of your bust, mm -hmm. if you've got a big bust, you can use the end of the ham. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a slightly smaller bust, then you use oh, the Oh, so it is, it is actually that versatile. And yeah. I hadn't even thought of what shape is my bust. No, no, no. Because I've got a, when I did tailoring, we used to use mm. our knee. So a really, really bent knee is right. for a big boob, and then a slightly straighter knee. When we used to pad stitch, we do it over our knees. That's amazing. I had never even considered my oh. knee or my boob Thanks. together. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we've got this. Now, I've actually got a ham holder. Again, more things I never knew existed. Because if this was for me, yeah. I would want to really get right in the tip. And the advantage of using one of these is that I don't get an imprint from the fabric ah. as I go around. So it's a little bit like using a seam roll. So you can just really carefully get a nice curve in. Because otherwise, if you if you go over, we had this with um, with lovely Jenny Smith yeah. yesterday, and she said exactly the same. I like it when our experts say the same. Um, in terms of you, if you go over that, you're going to mark the other side exactly. of the fabric. But so she just went in, just right on the tip. If so, you've got a small iron, is yeah, that going to help that at that help. this stage? But really, even if you don't have a ham, I often use the end of either my sleeve board or my ironing board because there's a curve. And then I let it hang off the side. And okay. again, it's that same thing. Okay. So often, like, I have to dress make on, on sets and things, and I won't have all these gadgets because they're too heavy to carry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the princess seam. Okay. And there are four in this dress. So the, the bust ones are more curvy, and then the two back ones are slightly less curvy, but it's exactly the same thing. There you go. Through here. Yeah. They look lovely. And it does give that uber flattering flow, doesn't it's it, just, to this? Here it's just it is. such a nice shape. It's a really skimming shape. So we might need to just grab the iron. Um, this is something that I always do when I'm sewing. Because this is a fully lined dress, mm -hmm. and you use a lot of the same pieces when you cut out your lining, but I kind of get a bit mixed up sometimes, as you've okay. just seen. <laughs> Human. So yeah. I keep my pattern pieces on, especially for a dress like this where they all look a bit similar. Yeah. And I keep them on until I'm just about to start sewing. Okay. And that way um, I don't get confused and I don't sew my side front to the back. And that's what pattern. heat would you like this on? Uh, just under a hot one. That there? Yeah. And ideally you want to use a lot of steam with this samba. Okay. So I've done a little bit of prep. Okay. And I've stitched my seam here between the circle for the bottom of the zip. Mm -hmm. And I've done that with a regular stitch and okay. then I've backstitched. This is going to form the vent at the back. So on the pattern, on the actual dress itself, the pieces that we're working with are these? Yeah, I'm just using those back panels just these for the These two pieces here. Yeah. So you'll sew on later your princess yeah. seams there. It's just these panels, because we're going to look at the zip here. And so you have then start... Hang on. Ooh. Do you want a hand? You can then... Yeah. Sew from, we're sewing from the bottom of the zip... Yeah. ...down... To the bottom, to top of the vent. To the top of the vent. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so then I've done a basting stitch... Yes. 
which is just going to hold it open. Okay. And this is, uh, I'm going to do a little lap zip, but I'm going to... A lap zip. Yeah. So for anybody that doesn't know what a lap zip is, let me spin this around. It's sort of like a flap zip, but you've just got one flap. Okay. Rather than a centered zip where you've got even parallel stitching. It's, again, it, it's very discreet. Yeah. Lovely. So in sort of vintage clothes, that's what they would have had. So this is something I'm quite used to doing for costume. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, now, we probably are going to want our Teflon because... Oh, there you go. I've not seen one like this. Mine is kind of like meshy. So um, I press the whole seam open, and what's most important is that I press this basting. Right. So you don't have to do it by the machine. You can do it um, by hand. Okay. And put a little bit of steam, so I'm trying not to hurt Natasha, because I'm a bit No, 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 I'm a bit clumsy. out the way. <laughs> now, one thing I would say, if you've I got... I don't know if that's going to... Oh, that, I think that's our non-stick one, I'm not sure if they've... If you've got a clapper, then I just want the steam to go out, because if I let this cool down, can yeah. you see how it holds the press? Yes. And then we just come all the way up here. Now, is, uh, this, this is a fabric, uh, I'm, I'm pleased that we're using the, the crepe today, mm -hmm. the summer crepe, because it's not, you know, normally you would just press and easy, 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 yeah. but the crepe is a slightly different beast, isn't it? It is, that's why it took me 40 minutes. <laughs> so this is just something, now I batch sew, so, so I do all, all of my cutting out, all of my marking, all of my stitching mm -hmm. in one bunch, and then I do all of my pressing and then I move on to the next kind of cross seams and that's just for productivity yeah so this is just something just take your time enjoy using this fabric and you'll get a really nice result okay. yeah so it's, it's not cotton i'd be careful don't not use a press cloth okay because you can get a bit of shine on it so some form of press cloth yeah whatever you've got yeah. go with it so i'm going to move these out of the way and I'm going to grab, so I get a little bit spatially dyslexic. Okay. Are you warning that you're going to whack me or something? Or, <laughs> no, no, or no. Just, <laughs> just for like... Do I need to stand back? Because I'm thinking about the, what is the right half of the garment when it's worn. Oh, I never yeah? have a clue. I'm glad that happens okay. to you too. So I turn it over. Right. And I look at it and I yeah. know that this is the right side. The right Your half. Back yeah? right. Yes. The back right. I have to so, actually put it to the mannequin. Yeah, sometimes I do that. Yeah, no, okay, good. So I'm looking at that. It's easier if you're at home to look at it like this. So imagine that someone's facing away from yes. you. Yes, yes. So that's the side that I want my lap. Okay. And then I'm going to turn it over. And this is why I've put the pin, because once... Oh, once you flipped yeah. it, it's the wrong way. Yes. Now, I've got a dark zip, just so that you can see what we're doing. Okay. And... So this I, is just a normal zip that we're putting zip. in. Regular zip. I'm just going to put a pin to mark where the bottom mm -hmm. goes. And in fact, this zip is a bit longer than I need because I grabbed the wrong one. So make sure that the zip pull yes. is face up. Okay. And then this is a regular 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. So I'm going to scooch this edge oh. over to there. Okay. And so you're lining it up with, with the um, right hand side Seam allowance. Seam allowance. So we're going to do a bit of speed sewing. Okay. Because I want to show you the hand sewing bit. Okay. So uh, again, coming from... That's the, the royal we, isn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a <the> chair. <laughs> because I come from a costume background, yeah. we have wardrobe malfunctions. Yes. So I can just do the top stitching. Yes. But... If that went while I'm giving it a little bit on the dance floor, yeah, yeah, yeah. then you can see my back. Yeah. So I'm going to swap to a zipper foot and I'm just going to machine the zip tape to the seam allowance. It's, it's belt and braces, isn't it? And, yeah. Um, and, and I know from having done very quick changes backstage, you know, you just, you want that costume off and you want the next one on. And, yeah. you know, the actors are, are stressed because they've got to get back onto stage and, and you've just got to be really dexterous. So they do go under a lot of pressure. So I, do. I And I like this because also, you know, if you're at a wedding, let's face it, a few shapes are going to be thrown on <laughs> that dance floor. 
Maybe we've done quick changes in the same place at the same time. I probably have. Okay, probably so this have. also helps when you do the prick stitching. Okay. Because then there's it's not wobbling around. It's already held in place. Okay, so we've got 10 minutes. Okay. I think get it speed in. so yeah, yeah, yeah. not phased at all. No. And then I'm just lining up the side of the zipper foot with the zip teeth. So what that's actually doing underneath, can you see how the zip is just going all the way over to the side that I'm going to have my lap? Okay. So this is a slightly unconventional way of doing it. But it works. Because oh. often you might give yourself extra seam allowance. Yeah. Um, I just wanted a very small lap zip, so that's why I'm doing it this way. It's very discreet. It, it's, it's halfway, isn't it, sort of between that and an invisible yeah. almost. Um, you, you spoke very early on, and I, I meant to <laughs> ask at the time, uh, you said very fine pins and also a fine needle. What size needle? So I would go for a 75 or an 80. Okay. And for the Samba, it's a good idea to use a stretch needle or a micro, like a blue tip micro tax needle. Oh, really? Yeah. OK. Just because you don't want to put and put a new needle in. Don't use something that's been in your machine that you've been making all kinds of stuff out of. Yeah. Um, and you can see it's so in fun. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'd also recommend definitely using a Gutterman thread because right. the fiber content of the fabric mixed with the threads, you really want to get the best results. So okay. use the best thread, Okay. which is good to me. Yes. In my opinion. Okay, yes. so when I get towards the top, can you see that my zip pulls in the way? Yes. So that's why I wanted the zip pull facing me. Right. So I'm going to squish it around oh, the, the actual side. Oh, the pull bit. Yeah. Right, I see, yes. And slide that out of the way. Ah. And then carry on. Okay. And I think that's, it's, it's, that, it's that bit, it's that moment there that scares people, I think, yeah. because they have to, oh, lift the presser foot and, oh. But also a lot of people just try and go around it and then they end up with a big wedge at the top. <laughs> so we don't want yeah. it to, we want this to be nice and straight. So um, speed sewing, guys, I should have started a bit higher up okay, okay. it doesn't matter because you put a little hook and bar so then that's my zip attached now it's a little bit curly because yeah, what is that okay yeah i just sewed that too fast and i didn't put any interfacing on right so um it's a good idea for this fabric to put some former band on okay just along the seam allowance here now some of this will shrink out with a little bit of steam now, um, you did ask for former band and we'd run out. Uh, we sold out the other day. Yeah, so I, I ran out in my studio. <laughs> We've all run out. <laughs> uh, but as soon but. as we get it back in stock, um, we, will, we will get it there for you. Um, now, this is brand new. To, in fact, I think it sold out in your last show. Didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, <laughs> so you may well have it as well. So uh, this is the pattern. This is brand new today. I just think it's incredibly flattering, uh, whether it's for office, whether it's for wedding, whether it's for graduation, whether it's for oh, I, I just a hot date. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but there it is. And again, day to night, you can wear it with your little pumps or if you want to have a killer pair of heels, absolutely go for it. But this is brand new today. Two patterns in one. Uh, this is the dress. Uh, we're going to concentrate on the jacket jacket at 11. Do check out your baskets. Make sure you're not missing out on this today. Uh, we've got it in two different sizes for you. Uh, the one on your screen at the moment is 14 to 22. That goes up to a 44 inch bust, 46 inch hips. Uh, we say two and a half meters of fabric um, for each maximum, for the larger size for each of the makes. So maybe you're just going for the dress. Uh, maybe you just want the jacket. Uh, maybe you want to do them in different fabrics. Yeah. It's entirely up to you. Um, we've got six minutes. Okay. So um, don't speed sew it without pinning it. Okay. Because like I did the princess seam, I should have made sure that that was eased. Yes. So um, I've just pinned to hold that central. Yes. And then if I flip it over, the first side is going to be where I am doing my little prick stitch. Right. So this is one of the few times I would normally baste. Okay. And if you're not sure about sewing in a straight line, yeah. get yourself a little bit of that quilt tape. Yes. It's kind of like a masking tape, isn't yes. it? And you can pop that, don't whack it down, but that will give you a nice straight line to sew on. Oh, okay. So I have got 
If we don't have that, if, but we've got something like a seams seams right, yeah, yeah. then you could just mark it on with a with yeah. a, a, a pen or something that's going to come out a chalk pen. So hand sewing, I always put a wax. Onto. I love this stuff. Yeah, I've never seen it before. Oh, you're gonna love it. Okay. We've, we've got the mini ones, but yeah, this is this is great. So you uh, run your thread through it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to start sewing straight away because okay. sometimes you get little lumps on it. So sometimes you might run it over an iron. I don't really want it on my iron. What I tend to do is the warmth of my hand will take any big lumps off. Okay. And this is like putting serum on your hair. Yes, it smooths, yeah. isn't it? And for hand sewing, it makes it a little bit stronger. So give myself a nice little knot. I also find that it doesn't, um, it, it doesn't knot as much yeah, yeah it's, it's much much also, easier in terms of hand sewing can you see how i've got a long tail and a short tail yes rather than drawing the two threads together so yeah. for prick stitching you want to use a single thread okay because i don't want to see big holes you're right. going to see a little bit but also this means that my needle can glide up and down the thread okay and i won't get as many knots okay and never have it longer than kind of like just over your arm span okay uh, right. the thread magic is in your uh graphic at the moment it's 7.99 that's with the ones that we've got in stock at the moment are the two little ones so you can actually attach it um onto your machine yeah. if i've Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here we go. It changes the sound of the machine, uh, but you can and you can adjust the mm. tension. But you can actually you can pop it onto your machine, uh, and so that all your threads as you sew all go through. Yeah. I actually put that onto my needle thread. I've got one of those attached on my needle thread, so every hand piece of sewing has got that on. It's good. It's good that you just put on your machine. Mm. So you learn something new. Yeah. Go. So um, I think Jennifer Taylor's shown you this stitch before. So I'm just starting and I want to only see a tiny little prick on the outside. So a little prick in the fabric. So this is one of those jobs. It's great just to take your time, enjoy doing. So even though I'm a speed sewer, yeah. I quite like a little bit of therapeutic hand sewing. So you want to try and make your stitches an even length. Mm -hmm. And what you do, once your thread comes out of the fabric, you take your needle backwards, almost straight back into the stitch. So you're, you're all, it's only sort of like a thread's width, yeah. isn't it? It's tiny, tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Now, because it's machined underneath, so some people will put a little mark on the nail so yes. they can work out the stitch length. I do that when I do <laughs> blanket stitch. <laughs> So that I get an even width of, of stitch on a blanket stitch. We've got two minutes. Okay. So um, in terms of, so I'm going to go all the way up the whole of this. And do you do all of this before you, you sew the rest of it? Do you put the zip in first? I do. Because I find, especially if I want to do a hand um, sewn zip, that I've got a lot less bulk. I've just got two bits of fabric to yeah. hold on to. So I'm not creasing up the entire dress okay. before it's even constructed. So let's pretend that I have gone all the way up to the top. Yes, yeah, perfect. And then I come back and I need to open up my zip. Mm -hmm. So the basting is making sure that everything is nice and even. So I'm just going to come in here, and I suggest using a seam ripper. Mm -hmm. But I forgot to ask for one. <laughs> oh, I've got okay. one somewhere. So again, what I would have done, mm -hmm. I'd come to this side, and from the back, I'd attach my zip yeah. to my seam allowance. Okay. So don't do the machining all at once because we want to do a little bit of jiggery pokery here. Right. Okay. So do one side. Then lap stitch. Yeah. Then come to the back and attach this side of the zip tape. Okay. To this part of the seam allowance. And then what I do when I get this open is I'm going to do a little bit of sort of cheating. So there are other ways to put in a lap zip. This is just how I like to do it with a hand sewn version. Okay, so that would be attached. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to get this. So you've already sewn that, you've machine mm -hmm. sewn that one side. Yeah. 
and then I'm just going to kind of tweak this over it. So you're almost rolling it over. Yeah. And this is why I do one side at a time. And then I've got a choice. I could machine top stitch this really close to the teeth. Yeah. But I think that can give it a heavy look. Okay. So we, I'd start at the top, come back, and again, I'm going to do a tiny little prick stitch. Yeah. Really, really, really close. And then we've got to go. I know. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, see how only temporarily going because you're going to come back in an hour and you're going to show us how to do the jacket. I am. So that's the juicy bits of the yeah. dress. It's the same pattern. So if you've bought the pattern already today, and thank you. Oh, if you've me. bought this already, then uh, we've, we've, we've attached the juicy bits of the dress and we're going to go for the uh, the jacket yeah. at, hang on, what's Eleven. that a bit? 11. <laughs> yes. See you later. Any questions, message in and we'll get them to TL. Thank you. Thanks thank you so much. Me. Right, I'll see you in an hour. Right, excuse me. Excuse me, love, should we dance? <laughs> right. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, now, let's take a look over here. This, which one first? All the middle ones, here we go. Let's start off with the magenta. This is the one that we have just been working with. All of these down here are my Samba crepes for you today. Uh, and then I've got varying around here. So $6.99 per half a meter for each of these. This is your magenta. That's the one that we've been working with. I love the vibrancy of these colors, beautiful. Uh, for the dress, you need two and a half meters max. But again, go onto the website. There'll be a picture of the back of the packet when you buy it, and then you can, you can check your sizings and the amount there. Uh, this is your Kingfisher Blue. This is the one the sample was made up in. Again, another a really rich flattering color all of these feel so luxurious they hang beautifully so you're going to look a million dollars in it this is your black crepe is your next one and again all of these 6.99 per half a meter uh, if you're going for two and a half meters that's going to be five units that you need to put in in your quantity box here is your black there you go uh, again, $6.99. The joy of your Samba crepe is that it's got that four-way stretch. Beautiful. This is your Sapphire. Now, these are all that lovely wide width for your dressmaking as well, which is fab. Very, very flattering color. Fab. Uh, so 94% polyester, 6% spandex. Love a bit of spandex. So, and it gives you that four-way stretch, uh, and that's how it is, how it's made. This is your white. Yeah, look at that nice little bit, just enough, just enough stretch, isn't there? And so all of these are your Samba. This is $6.99 per half meter, R-U-E-L 24. Love the fuchsia, the fuchsia, look at this. It's a brilliant color. It is wedding season, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely wedding season. Now, you might want to go for the whole outfit in just one colour, or maybe go for the fuchsia and then maybe a grey jacket that you can then wear at other times as well. Mix it up at, I don't know. This is your silver. This is a very flattering grey, actually, this silver. Very lovely. And that's 6 99 Now, the last one is violet here. Okay, so this is the last of my Sambas. So if you're after a Samba crepe, here it is with that four-way stretch, $6.99, Y-W-E-L-39. There we go. Now, over here, this was the brand new one. This was what we were saying. This is lipstick. This is brand new today. So when CL and I were talking about different fabrics that are going to work with this outfit, uh, this is definitely one of them. This is your lightweight crepe, um, a little bit sort of crepe de chine, 100% uh, polyester, but look how that falls. Just beautiful. Loads in the basket. It feels like peach skin. That's how it feels. So you're going to feel a million dollars in this. Absolutely stunning. Um, and that is brand new today. Uh, absolutely. Look at that. Whoa. It ju it's just one of those luxurious feeling fabrics. And it's just $4.99 per half a meter. Lovely. Now, I've got three other lightweight crepes for you. Uh, here we go. Let's get the details up here. So this is your jade. 
Now, this is your triple crepe. Okay, so you've got triple crepe. Again, as, it, as the name suggests, this is giving you a triple stretch, 100% polyester, and that's six pounds 49 per half a meter. Uh, each of the projects, two and a half meters for the bigger, biggest sizes. Uh, this is your Air Force Blue. Again, a very flattering color. Love that color. Air Force Blue, very smart. Six pound 49. And I think, you know, the, a, a color change in this dress um, is, is going to really change the whole feel of it. And then that's your black triple crepe. So we wanted to bring you a variety today. Here it is, your black triple crepe. Again, that triple sway stretch, uh, six pounds, 49 pence, BHXP67. Right, now, linings. Very, very quickly, let's go through these linings. Uh, these are all anti-static linings for you. Uh, this is your mauve. So again, this is by the half meter, it's just £1.49 per half a meter, uh, and you only need to line the dress. So it's only gonna be a maximum of two and a half meters that you'll need. That's your mauve. Air Force Blue. And I think actually it was the Air Force Blue that we used uh, with the Kingfisher. It was, wasn't it? And again, £1.49 per half a meter, two and a half meters max that you'll need because you don't have to line the jacket. We'll show you why later. Next one is violet. And again, so this is gonna work with any of your purples. And this is anti-static. Um, I think this is 150, so it's very wide. So again, it's 148, there you go. What's two centimeters between friends, eh? Uh, your petrol blue, I love that petrol blue. Oh, that would look nice, uh, go nicely with the kingfisher actually as well, wouldn't it? Mm, and the jade. Uh, then you've got your grey. Oh, sorry. There we go. There we go. There's your silver. It's a very soft, soft grey, isn't it, the silver? Very lovely. And that's £1.49. Now, cerise. Yes, yes. This is your cerise here. And again, all of these, that lovely wide dressmaking width, 148 centimeters. Now the next one is maroon. Actually, these, these all, this would work with your, um, with your magenta as well, actually. I quite like having a contrasting colored lining. Uh, this is your jade, oh, nice. So again, all of these anti-static linings, and they're all £1.49 per half a metre, UOBF61. When you buy the pattern on the website, uh, you, you'll need this for 11 o'clock as well. When you buy this on the website, this back of the packet is one of the photographs, so you can zoom in from there and check you're buying the right amount of fabric. The very maximum that you'll need is two and a half for the dress, two and a half for the top. Uh, you do need to start checking out. This is brand new today. We are carrying on with this at 11 o'clock because it is, well, it's a two-way make, isn't it? You've got your dress and you've got your jacket. We've done the dress. We're going to look at the jacket. There we go, $14.99 for that. After the break, we've got a brand new book launch. We've got Carolyn Forster in herself, in person. Um, she's signed them all. She's done good work this morning. So we're going to get her in and have a look at her brand new book after the break. Follow us on Pinterest. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Tune in on Saturday the 2nd of June at 10am to see Nicola Dodd's Auriculus Quilt Kit. Previously featured in today's quilter, this delightful design is perfect for all quilters alike. The patchwork style, which accentuates the pale, soft tone colours, is ideal to show off your skills. And with two colour options, what's not to love? Choose from morning or midnight colour palettes. This delicate design is perfect for any room in your home and with this quilt you can enjoy the blossoming flowers all year long. Join Nicola Dodge on Saturday the 2nd of June at 10am. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687. Join Jane Orcock at 12pm on Sunday the 3rd of June with her Georgetown Carnival quilt. Create vibrant colourful circle blocks with this clever design. Originally featured in Love Patchwork and Quilting, the bold, fun style of this gorgeous quilt shows its pure uniqueness. 
Our kit comes with a colourful rainbow of solids, so you can choose all your favourite colours and turn them into this fabulously funky carnival quilt. So tune in to see Jane Orcott create this fabulous Georgetown carnival quilt on Sunday the 3rd of June at 12pm, only on Sewing Quarter. Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687. Join us on Tuesday the 5th of June when Lucy Brennan will be here with two very different and very exciting projects. At 10am Lucy will be playing with clever print placement to create a modern mini quilt. We've put together a range of kits featuring fabric to help you get the look at home. Then at 12pm we have the Clever Clover Slash Cutter plus templates and plush velvet fabric. Combined with a little know-how from Lucy, a faux chenille effect is quickly created with classic shapes including hearts and stars. So tune in as Lucy Brennan teaches us these two tantalizing techniques, Tuesday the 5th of June at 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687. Hello, welcome back. Now, this hour is all about this book here. Uh, 48 different designs. Uh, of, hang on, no, no, sorry, 68. 68, gosh, that's an awful lot. All to make with your jelly rolls. I know you have a fabric stash at home. I know that you're sitting there going, oh, what am I gonna do with it? What am I gonna do with it? Uh, so we are launching today, first time on air, um, The Joy of Jelly Rolls by Carolyn Foster. Not only that, but we've got Caroline in. Better than that, she's signed them all. My word, she's worked hard this morning. She came in at quarter past six, took one look at the stack of books and went, all of them. Yes, please, all of them. And so she has worked incredibly hard this morning. Here she is. There you go. In fact, she says there might be the odd one where she I have not even spelled her name right. <laughs> Is that, that repetitive? Do, 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 do. Uh, now, so many of you have adding this to your baskets already. Well done. 68 projects in here, and they are signed, which makes it super, super special. Super special. Uh, let's have a look. Should we have a little look? We'll have a very good look through, but I just wanted you to see how thick this is. It's absolutely huge. Now, you might recognize Carolyn from, um, you know, some of our magazines and things like that. She hasn't been on air for a year with us. We were just saying the other day, it's been absolutely ages. Um, so absolutely lovely to have you back. Uh, and we will, we will be with her. Oh, Ollie the octopus. Um, we've got a lot of these to show you as well, which is just superb. Um, but of course, you're gonna need a jelly roll to work with your new jelly roll book. Um, I have a limited number of one of our favorites, less than 20, of our Joel Dewberry. Yeah, you see, I love that. That's, that's a thing of beauty to me. But then look at all of these, 40 pieces. Let me just spin that around so that you can see all these different colorways. Beautiful. This is Joel Dubry's latest collection. And we'll look at that in more detail in a minute. But first, I want to look at the book. I'm going to take this book because I don't know where the one is that I marked <coughs> up earlier. Was it in the box? I don't know where that went. Oh, there it is. Ta-da. As if by magic. Carolyn, as hello. Magic. How are you? Good to see come you. Come on in. Come on come in. in. Come on in. Uh, now, jelly rolls. What's the love of a jelly roll? Well, basically, it's just all the fabrics all together, all in a like cohesive little bundle. And um, it's all pre-cut. You see, we've got your strips already cut two and a half inches wide. So really, when you buy your jelly roll, it should be something you'll instantly, yeah, I'm going to make something out of it. But I know, I mean, I know from experience and I know from the 
girls I talk to, that everyone buys the jelly roll and then sort of months later it's still like tightly bound in its circle. So really with the sort of the it's ideas. It looks so pretty. It looks so pretty, <laughs> but it would look even prettier <laughs> if you got it out and made something with it. Oh yeah, that too. No, so that too. yeah, so it's it's just all about it's just the fun of what's well, the fun of buying the fabric, isn't it? And then hopefully the fun of making things that are great out of it as well. So this has just got loads of it's stuff. That moment when you remove the plastic band, the elastic band, yeah. you know it's never ever gonna look like that that beautiful swirl ever again. And then mm. there's the promise of what so many options, what to make. So many options. I mean, you've got full-size quilts, you've got all the diddy little projects that um, we've got in the book, as well as the full-size quilts. I mean, one of the things with the jelly rolls for me is, because I know with the one you've got there, it has that labelled ribbon round it as well. So part of it's like, I have to keep that then. Yes. 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 And, then, <laughs> and then use something for that as well. But, um, but yeah, it's just, it's just all the fun of stitching and fabric and, um, yeah. It is, a it's a beautiful thing. Now, producer Paul, have you got a calculator at the ready? Okay, could you put 68 divided by 12.99? Oh, yeah, we talked about this, didn't we? None of us had the brain to oh, work yeah, it out. Oh, yeah, 12.99 divided by, yeah, no. 19 pence per project. There you go. That's it. That's 19 pence per project. Um, I'm going to show you my screen here. Okay. These are all the people that have already bought... Brilliant. Good These are the people that are chatting. Mm. Uh, everyone that has checked out, half the stock has gone. Oh. That was a lot of I books. was like, oh no, they might make me sign more now <laughs> and I'll never leave. <laughs> we, did, we did make you sign no. an awful lot it this morning. It was good, it was all good. Um, and so yeah, you, you may rest your arm. There you were, quarter past six this morning, signing away, stack upon... So actually, you, I saw that you had a little... Um, you had a little system going. Oh, I thought fine. you said I had a break for breakfast. <laughs> no, we didn't yeah. feed you. Yeah, you no, I did eat. Oh, yeah. no, <laughs> I did eat, no, no. but yeah. We cracked that I had a system, yeah. So I am going to say, yeah, that they should all say happy stitching, Carolyn. But then I did say halfway through, I've probably got completely <laughs> phased and missed my name off. And I said that would be like the golden book, the person who gets the book without my name in. That will, you know, they must tell me and I will um, write my name in it for them. <laughs> Or, I mean, it's, it's, you, have you, it's you've got to that stage sometimes you, where you've, you've written something so many times and then you look at it and you go... Yeah, it did look funny after a while. Yeah. Happy with two Ps. Yeah. I was like, is that right? Show them some projects. <laughs> now, um, I'm going to pop this down. And uh, this is here. I love this. Oh, you have got... Whoops. Uh, to start checking out, 41 of you have just got it sitting in your basket. It's not yours until you check out. So if you're a new buyer and you're unsure of how that works, it has to be checked out of your basket before it's actually yours. Now, this little lady here has got the sort of arms that can be swung around. This is perfect for little ones. Absolutely perfect. Not only do you get a beautiful hit of colour. Actually, this is going to be just le leftovers, isn't it, from some of the projects? It's, it's often bits left over if, you've, um, if you cut your own jelly rolls as well from stashes of fabric of yardage that you've got, then you could just create your own two and a half inch strip conglomeration. Um, but with that, yeah, I mean, most of the quilts, all of the quilts in the book actually use up an entire jelly roll. So mm. you haven't actually got a lot of wastage from those. But if you've got one that you just want to spread out so that um, you can see it in lots of different projects as opposed to just a quilt, then um, doing the little projects um, is, is pretty good fun. Excellent. Now, um, Ollie the Octopus is one of my favorites and <laughs> This might sound strange. Whenever I think of you, I think of Ollie the octopus. Uh, there he is, nestling with his little friends. Um, because I do love Ollie. You do. Because <clears throat> I think he's very achievable. Uh, and a great finished project. Hey, Overcoat hey. it, pop it in your bathroom. Oh. 
You could, you could as so well. So it's if waterproof? You, it, yes, true. You were talking about that earlier on, weren't you? I mean, also for me, it's things like you could stuff his legs because she's got stuffed legs. Yes. But swingy arms. So the bells it's, on the bottom, I think, for little ones. You could do that whole tactile thing. Yes. Different fabric swatches. Yes. you were working with jersey and stuff earlier on and you've got different fabric swatches. But, um, yeah, just you could teach them to plait. Oh, yeah, what a great could idea. Teach them to count. I mean, that's assuming that I've actually put eight legs on this. <laughs> I was sort of like opening myself up well, to a know, big problem. Let's, but but um, we're not here to judge. Uh, yeah, you've got lots of <laughs> techniques in there because the way we um, did the top part, so that he's a little bit more substantial, we um, he's stitched onto wadding and backing fabric with a stitch and flip technique, and then he's machine quilted, so you can use your decorative machine stitches or hand quilt if Everybody you want. Everybody starts quilting from a different perspective <clears throat> and sometimes yeah. uh, quilting a huge quilt is too too daunting. So actually a lovely way to, to try out some of your decorative yeah. stitches, yeah. have a good go with that. So I think, you know, not only does he look great, and I'm so pleased to finally meet him in the flesh, because whenever we've had any of you, it's always Ollie the octopus. Um, I think he's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Get the felt out, get those eyes on. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a great child-friendly toy because there is actually nothing in hi on him that's yes. like hazardous or a choke hazard. So he'd be great for, um, you know, from when they're tiny. Perfect. Uh, that is Ollie. And actually something nice for them to, to look at and see and reach for. That's Ollie. Now, on this page here... OK, yeah. ..is your log cabin... Nice. Yeah, this is interesting because what we tried to do, what I tried to do when we're looking at the jelly rolls is actually to think of lots of different techniques that you can work with with the jelly rolls. So this was um, a mat that you could make bigger projects with it, but it's Manx Log Cabin. Right. And basically, it's based on a technique where all your two and a half inch strips, you actually fold them in half, so they're half the width. Okay. And then you layer them up on a backing. So if you actually sort of delve down into here you can see where they're stitched down but they create this lovely textured effect and um and they give it it hasn't got any batting or wadding in it but because of all the layered up fabrics it's, it's lovely quite, isn't it yeah, it's got it nice is weight substantial to it. Yeah. very substantial and that is beautiful <clears throat> uh, so we've got that and it, it's so nice for me to be able to actually show you this, this is it, this is it. And when you came on a year ago, uh, you, you did a beautiful quilt with us. And what's really nice is seeing that in the book um, and also the little matching pin cushion where you could yeah. practice the technique before you made it into the quilt. Yeah, we have, we've got that quilt here today. We'll probably have a look at that later. We'll have a good rummage. I'm now thinking I've got no idea whether I've got the pink cushion with me. That's but, okay. You know, That's hey, okay. Hey. Uh, we've had, I had to stop marking pages in the end because uh, I realised how many of these I really enjoy. This is another one that we have. Oh, look at that. Look at this. Yeah. This is great because it uses that half hexagon shape, but if you pair them up with the same colour, you create a whole hexagon. I didn't because I was thinking, how is this from a jelly roll? Yeah, it's just the half of the hexagon. And yeah. It also means when you stitch it, you haven't got any set in pieces. You've yes. only got straight lines to stitch. You haven't got anything tricky with that. So if you choose your fabrics with small prints, what else we've got, or even bigger prints really, um, you don't have to worry about the pattern matching either Perfect. because actually it all seems to gel together it has done here so yeah no this is a really good one because that's sort of how to sort of impress your friends at a dinner party type thing and yeah. people who stitch will be oh my goodness you did all the set in seams but actually there aren't any and you used it from jelly roll strips so um yeah Perfect. It's, a, it's a good win, win. project yeah win win gorgeous um, we have got so many projects in here where do you get your inspiration from mm. A lot of the time, um, quilt-wise, it's from old quilts. It's from antique quilts or books with just blocks in, as opposed to whole quilts. You just get black and white pictures of blocks, um, mainly old quilts. I like a lot of really old sewing books, really old. Like for, <laughs> I'm going to sound like about 90 now. Um, I've got a lot of sewing books from like 1970s, yes. which was from when I was a kid. And, um, and the graphics in them I really like, but then also the projects I just think are, are really exciting. So it always starts with something from an old project or an old book. I guess if you're looking back at something from the 70s and you're bringing it up to now, then mm -hmm. we're looking at 40 years and, and actually, when you start thinking about that, if you're still liking something from then, 
it's it's like a Beatles track, isn't it? It's stood the test of time. It, yeah. And it's yeah. going to be something that's going to be able to be handed down. Yeah, it's got a and longevity really to it. And yes. just being brought up to date with the current fabrics and colours and different textures. So, yeah. Now, uh, lovely step-by-step -step instructions in the book. Please check out your baskets if you've got the book in, uh, in, your, in your basket. Don't want anybody to miss out. But again, just showing you step by step, a lot of hard work and effort has gone into making sure that these are step by step, really clear, easy to stitch. And I love this because we all have those little snippets left over. What are we going to do with them? Make it into a hair snap. But it, it is yeah, one no, of those it things. Yeah, no, it is a good, good project. It's pretty. You've got <coughs> a wedding, pop a uh, feather behind it as well, and you've got sort of a, a little fascinator. Um, I'm always worried about wearing fascinators because of being so tall. I don't want people to be able to see if they're sat behind me. So something like that, a little bit of interest. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Obviously, you're living that lifestyle where you wear fascinators. For weddings. I'm just like, Not okay. just like every day. <laughs> well, oh, it's a Wednesday. Let's uh, bring out the, out the fascinator, fascinator today. <laughs> It's my new thing. I'm going to wear a fascinator to a wedding, or that because a hat's just too big. Too big. I do love you. a hat, but it's just a bit too big in a wedding because I'll just block everything. Um, now <laughs> your stacked pin cushions. I like a stacked pin cushion. It means you've just got. I like it. You've just got lots of little areas to put different pins in. I'm a bit of a, a pin fanatic. Like, there are different pins for different things, and um, sometimes if you've got them in different it's so places, true. then it's yeah, so, so true. you can just stack them up or leave them on their own. They're just. But also, cool. I, I stack them so, especially if I've, I've used um, scraps from a leftover something and it's part of, it's nice to see, <clears throat> it's just another excuse to get these fabrics out. It's another excuse to, to stitch, it's, you can use favourite buttons and things like that. In yes. fact, the little um, fascinator hair clip, it's mm -hmm. only about this big, um, mm -hmm. you could actually use the um, scrunchie from the middle of that in the middle of the pin cushion as well. So Perfect. you could chop and change a lot of the ideas. Perfect. Ah, now. Oh yeah, this is a sweet thing, yeah. This this is really lovely because it's it's giving you the chance to um, bring into your home a lovely yeah. hit of colour. And I don't know about you, but after Christmas, when you take all your decorations down, the house just looks really empty. It's, yeah, it's a bit of a downtime, yeah. isn't it? And I think with something like this, um, it's on one of those foam core circles. They're really lightweight and easy to store. And um, you can just use whatever seasonal colours you want. This one's pretty clean and fresh, summery or post-Christmas yeah. um, to brighten things up. But really, and also you could use these projects a lot with children as well. Just thinking that it's, it's you those know, makes, not isn't all it? stitching there is stitching in most of them but something like this just wrapping um all the bits of fabric round that you've stitched into a long coil um yeah really straightforward to do i mean we didn't even finish off the tie here that is just raw edged fabric so. but i quite like that and often a, a lot of the, your jelly rolls <coughs> will be um pinked edges yeah so again it's not going to fray yeah but it is going to give some some texture and some interest and i i've got that marked out for a summer holiday project because nice. let's face it, that is fast approaching. It's only Summer six holidays. weeks away. You are counting, aren't you? Yeah. Only in half term now, aren't we? I trying know. to get through that one. I know. <laughs> I'm already thinking about because I'm not going to be terribly mobile by that stage. So I'm thinking, what can Freddie and I do? You'll be making little things for the nursery then, yeah, one of those. Absolutely. Possibly I won't be making her a coffee and tea coaster because, you know, Coffee in a, in a nursery never goes down a treat, does it? But it does for me for keeping me awake. So, um, again, it's a lovely excuse to get that hit of colour. Yeah, and also, again, these have got different techniques because on these we machine quilted them. And again, we've got, we did some straight line quilting. Um, and also you've got your decorative machine stitches again, which again, for practising all those techniques on something small and something you're going to use, then yeah, I just think it's, a, it's an instant stitching hit really. Perfect, perfect. And okay, so this is the hair scrunchie. I like these because it doesn't pull your hair. It doesn't pull your hair. And actually also lots of things we've picked so far have been quite girly, which it's a bit self-indulgent to say that I've put these in a book, but I haven't got a little girl. I've got, a, I would say, a little boy. And um, you don't get to make hair scrunchies and hair clips so much oh. when you've got a little a, a lad. So, um, so to actually make the projects and put them in here, 
it was a bit self-indulgent, but um, it's just great because you get to go in different avenues and try out different things that I wouldn't have done before. You so. are not the only guest that loves the uh, the excuse to do girly things. <laughs> um, Jess has got, we've, lovely Jess Entwistle, so she's got two boys. She's like, right. I just wanted to make it in pink. Yeah. And I could because it was for the magazine or it was yeah. for you guys, yeah. so it just didn't matter. Yeah. Um, now, here's your patchwork placemat. Now, we say this is for jelly rolls. Yes. Um, but there's no reason. A lot of you at home have things like our um, stripology rulers. Okay, right. So where you can easily cut your own two and a half inch strips. Yep. So basically, for anybody at home that doesn't know what a jelly roll is, because it sounds delicious, um, <laughs> not to be confused with your Arctic roll. Did you used to have those for school lunches? Oh, yeah, we did use, we do, yeah. I think they yeah. still make Arctic they? roll. But yeah, it's scarily enough, um, yeah. But again, it's just a two and a half inch strip, so you can cut your own if you've got a project in here that you absolutely yeah. must do. Yeah, you don't need to have one of the, you know, your pre-selected. You can select your fabric from your own stash. You can get the rulers. You can use any ruler if you've got ones that are just cutting to two and a half inches, then that's great because there's no thought involved in the cutting, no measuring or checking. And you just cut across the width of your fabric and then you have your, your strip. And if you wanted to create a whole roll out of your stash, then you need 40 strips. Done. And if you have something like Stripology, you've got a long ruler like this. <clears> I <throat> did have to giggle because um, a lot of our viewers have just bought their Stripology rulers. They're now oh, okay. out of stock. And they say that they're, you know, they're, they're happy cutting. And I said, happy, happy, it's nice to see so many ha ha cutting happy strips. And they're like, oh, happy strippers. Oh, with your fascinator on. Well, it's just sounds <laughs> it's wrong. All going. It's all sounding wrong. Um, but make sure you've got the right, the right tools for the job. If you want to cut your own strips, uh, this is a, also a great one to go for because you fold your fabric in half, salvage to salvage. In, unless it's a dressmaking fabric, it's going to be about 44 inches. Yeah. Folded in half is 22. This is 24 and a half inches long. So by the time that your fabric is underneath here, folded in half, you've got an inch or so to line up your rotary cutter at one end and to then come off the other end. You've got another sort of inch there, which makes it nice and safe. So you can cut through in one go, chunk, chunk, chunk. And off you go. And because this is a creative grid, you've also got your two and a half inch mark. Let me spin that around so that you can see it because I've got it facing me at the moment. So along here, it does give you inches, but it also very handily, if I could just put my finger on it there, gives you there your two and a half inch mark. So you're not having to go, is that the half or the quarter inch mark? All the way up, um, you've got that two and a half inch mark. So this is yeah. a very, very handy one. It's all nice and clear. So it it's is, isn't it? And safe because yeah, you've got that non-slip grip. Now this is brilliant because we all have millions of these now, um, which we have to reuse. Yes, so we should, yes. Um, and that is our plastic bag tidy, which is great. And again, it's something you can make out the bits left over. You can, um, you know, select from your jelly rolls. You can actually make a lot of things for home out of one jelly roll packet. Yes. So that then everything coordinates together. Nice. So that's a... Perfect. We like that <coughs> as well. Oh, now, when I looked at this, it wasn't something that I instantly thought of had come from a jelly roll. It's, it's not obvious because, A, because it's a plique, yeah. but I think people forget how much fabric there is in the roll and also, in effect, how little you need to cut a plique sheet, shape sheets. Shape, <laughs> we have no sheep in no the sheep book. Harm. No sheep or harm. No, no sheep, sheep in the book. When you cut the shapes, one of my favourite shapes is this little, like, leaf or ellipse shape, and um, I, I use it a lot in a plique. So the fact that actually just having strips of fabric and just line the you know, the shape up on it, cut them out, and then we um, hand embroidered these onto um, a cotton linen tablecloth. It's stunning. Um, which it's is really great. Stunning. But again, if you're a machine stitcher, you can use your decorative machine stitches. But, um, you know, sometimes a bit of hand works are nice. You like a bit of hand work. I do like I a bit of hand work. I seem to remember this so, about you. Yes, you're that's all hand, fin hand, hand finished. Hand quilting as well. Yeah. You've been known to do a bit of that. Yeah. Um, now... Oh, hand quilted, yeah. hand, hand quilted again. Yeah. But again, a great reason to get out those decorative threads, those beautiful coloured threads, and really make something special. 
Yeah, and this one as well with the little um, little berries there, they only use a two and a half inch square. Nice. So you, you're not cutting that much. If you've got really favorite fabrics, there's always that really favorite one that's just too precious to eat into. Um, then you can just cut tiny little bits out and you could get the whole, you know, the whole range of fabrics onto the um, onto the little mat there. For just a tiny, tiny, tiny little scratch, scratch in, which yeah. is absolutely superb. Um, if you've just joined us, 60, hang on, what did I say? 68 projects yeah, in here. Yeah, we're in that ballpark. If everybody checks out, I've got five left. Oh, okay. There was a lot of styling you did this morning. Uh, now, if everybody checked out, we've sold out. So well done if you managed to get this. Um, 24 quilts in here as well yeah we've had a look at oh, there are 44 gifts and 24 quilts that's how it's broken down uh so i think one of those things that i love about this is that you you do have those bigger projects 24 large yeah projects full size quilts and that still works out at nine, 19 pence a pattern whether it's a quilt pattern was it, was it, it 19 pence it was something ridiculous like 19 pence wasn't yeah, it we've obviously got such a retentive yeah. memory for these yeah. facts but it was something like really good value um, and yeah, so yeah, so whether you get a pattern in here for a tabletop or for a doll or for a full size quilt, given the, the sort of the amount of project and the price point, then yeah, I just think incredibly good value, it, it whether you're win -win. a quilt person or a knick-knacky person. But sometimes, and this I hear a lot from people who have just finished off making a massive great big quilt, like I just need something that's small, or I just want something that's portable, or I just yeah. want something that I can make quickly because I've just spent six months of my life making that. Yeah, it's and nice now to have I'd a quick like something fix of, yeah. for that, yeah. that, that quicker gratification yeah. almost. And this book scans it all, it covers the whole, the whole thing. Now a needle book, I'm very partial to a needle book. It is, yeah, I just think you can't, this is like, oh, yeah, I can't go wrong with a needle book. Um, and this is just a little ditzy one. There's hardly any finishing in it. So we um, pink the edges on this and then did big stitch quilting. So this is an incredibly quick fix one. And again, we're talking about um, projects over the summer, perhaps yes. with kids or children who are starting to think they want to stitch. And something like this, it's only got, um, I think, one piece of machine stitching, which is when you stitch the two yeah. strips together. And to be honest, you could do that by hand. No, absolutely. So for a, a little person or somebody who wants to get into stitching, you've got some good projects in the reason here. This is very dear to my heart. My, um, my very <laughs> first needle book that I yeah. made, uh, I gave to my grandmother and I, I embroidered grandma on it and Aww. did balloons and everything. It was all in felt. And when she passed away, it yeah. came back to me. Oh, so I think my that's needle nice. book yeah. is hers. Yeah. that has come back. Yeah. So it's, it's one of these things, this is full of mini heirlooms. Yeah, no, absolutely. Even the way you choose the ribbon or you choose the buttons. Because I was saying when you undo the jelly roll, you've always got that tape yeah. with the sort of the name around it. And I keep those, Me too. you know, forever. And, um, and really, you know, sometimes if I have half a brain, I'd use that to wrap up the needle book because you've already got that. And it saves you going out and buying it another little bit because you've already got the stuff with you fab and buttons can tell a story too well this was yeah this was uh, not stretching it a bit but basically because of the all the jelly roll colors and fabric sometimes you just want them on a nice clean crisp finish so we did um we basically covered buttons and then put them onto a linen um cushion you know um and use that it's actually the closure for the cushion as well so you haven't got to worry about any zips or anything like that it is just um i suppose what they call an envelope yeah finished cushion yeah and um the buttons for it have all been co covered with the jelly roll fabric so perfect so like it's another way yeah. that you can you can get that in because i sometimes do that I'll, I'll do a patterned heavily patterned cushion and then highlight yeah so you know with with a covered button or something like that we are down to single figures on the books now however 33 of you want it so we are oh, it's like I was going to have a panic attack <laughs> there. It was like, oh. Uh, Karen, you signed them all. You very kindly came in early this morning to sign them all. There she is, busily signing them all. And as you can see there, we had a lot oh, of yeah. books. Yeah, I've got my cardigan on then as well. I got hot after a while with all well, the sand. Nice. I took my I'm, cardigan I'm off. if you don't yeah. have repetitive strain injury this morning <laughs> no. after the number that you've had to sign. It was fun. It was um, all good fun. Things like this. Oh, yeah, the little ditzy bag is... Um, yeah, quite cute. In fact, it was it's such this is such a popular little mm. ditzy. It is ditzy because when they blow it up to this A what I call A4 size page, the bag itself, if you think about it, it's only made out, it can only be six inches 
tall maximum. <laughs> and I think it's actually taller on the here than oh, really? it is yeah, in real life. Um, but yeah, that's the sort of well-traveled, great for little kids putting all the little sweets in goodie bags like if you that. really want to spend the time on it. Yes. But I make it and then think, well, I'm not actually giving that to anyone. I just, I'll just keep that. I can keep sewing bits in it. But keep it, the a little sewing bag book in it. Is yeah is indispensable but also I think sometimes there are those friends that it would be awkward if you spent too much on a gift it's always nice to make but if you made though, something yeah. then that's yeah. almost far more acceptable and then maybe you could you know you could put some you know nice little chocolates or something in yeah. there or or a really nice bottle of smellies and then yeah. and then you know there's not that awkwardness but it's it's a perfect and also perfect I think something. when you make a bag as well for something like that for gift giving then people will keep that and use it for something else and remember you every time <laughs> whether that's a good thing or a bad thing oh well, yeah <laughs> But yeah, I just it. think they'd use that. Whereas you get lots of the cardboard bags that you tend to have, and then you think, oh, I'll reuse that. But I don't. I just fold them up and put them away. I have a whole box of folded up bags like that. Yeah. yeah. Whereas yeah, yeah. the little fabric ones, it's like, oh yeah, I could keep little buttons in that, or I could keep cosmetics in that one, or yeah. So you it's use a gift them more when they. Yeah. It? So it's in nice. A way. Uh, now. Oh yeah, these yeah. <laughs> The lavender ravioli. Firstly, big fan of pasta, so ravioli, you had me at ravioli. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Uh, secondly, the lavender. Um, we actually, we stop. Well, I don't know. We'll have to check if we still have this. Um, House of Alastair's lavender is one of the nicest okay. lavenders I have ever, ever smelt. It's uh, Yorkshire lavender. Wow, yeah. Um, and it smells amazing. And some of you were asking on, um, on our Sewing Quarter fan page, how do I keep my moths out of my stash? Okay. They hate the smell of lavender. Oh, I didn't realise that. And cedarwood. Okay. So if you pop anything like that in your little ravioli... Oh, I knew mm. about the cedarwood. I didn't know about the lavender. So mm. that's so interesting. Yes. And, um, you know, so maybe you want to scatter this throughout your um, your undies drawer, give them a nice scent in there, or through your fabric stash, stop any moths getting in there. Yeah, I must admit, with these, because they are quite, they ditzy, they are ravioli size, and because of it, they are quite, I find them quite addictive to make, because basically they don't have any finishing to do, so you haven't got to turn the seams. I've pinked the edges. Generally, the... Um, your jelly roll strips will have pink, pink edges yeah. anyway. So if when you're subcutting, because these are into two and a half inch squares, if you are subcutting, just use, you can mark and just use a pair of pinking shears. You can get the rotary cutters with the crinkle edge as well. You could use one of those if you've got one. But basically they're just stitched on the outside edge and we used a bolder thread just to give it a little bit more drama there, make it look a bit more substantial. And you're gonna sew all of the three sides and you could actually chain piece those. You just oh, wow. production yeah. line, run them through on each side. Leave one side open and then that's your lavender stuffing it's about yeah. a teaspoon of lavender per one and um and then basically just run them all back through the sewing machine again on just chain piecing and then and basically then you just snip them all apart and they're done so there is there's very little finishing so for gift giving for um school fates yes. and that sort of thing yes you know four or five of those in a little bag or with a ribbon bag or, or yeah, would be nice. in, hang on if only oh, we had the bag back. hang on there you go yeah if we had the little in one bag. of those and, uh, and you're good to go. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just one thing leads to another. Now, um, your lavender ravioli. I did, I did just say we have some, lavin some lavender. Yeah. Uh, here is your house of Alistair lavender. It's $8.99. I oh, wow, absolutely love that stuff. Absolutely, like that is by far. Some lavenders just don't smell right. This one is gorgeous. Uh, he's got a very good nose, has okay. Alistair. Okay. Uh, that sounds weird, but you know, as, as but one does, he, yeah. uh, he, he went to great lengths to find uh, right. the right kind of lavender. Because there are lots of different ones, because where we live up from us, there is a, a big lavender farm. Well, you're Kent, aren't you? So, yeah. yeah, and they have all the different strains of lavender all in one place, and that is really interesting to look at. But um, yeah, to know all the, the subtleties of it, and yeah. um, and that bag looked like you got a lot, a lot it, as well, kind of a quantity is, well, no, there. Well, no, 250 so. grams, and it's obviously it's dried. So, yeah. um, and he just says, you know, just just if ever you need to reactivate it, don't put it near your um, 
uh, near your heating because okay. it will it will just dry it out. But okay. if you just crush it again, then the oils that activate that smell, that lovely It'll aroma, start will start out again. Um, and actually, I I never lose it because I've whatever cupboards it's in. <gasps> You mm, know from I the know. smell. Lovely. I'm going to come back to you in just a moment. Okay. I'm going to go have a little look at some fabric because, okay. you know, you're going to need some with your book. Thank you. <laughs> I'm back in a second. All righty. Let's have a look over here at what we've got for you. Ah, uh, this is our Joel Dewberry Jelly Roll here, which is a bit special, um, which, is, which is our jelly roll that we have available for you today. There you go. That one there. And this is when I, you see, when I get a jelly roll, this is how it all, I, I do this over my ironing board. I've got a big long ironing board. And, I, and then I sort it out into colour families or uh, whatever else that I need to do. And it is, it is very, very satisfying. Limited because this is our last jelly roll in the company. What? At the moment? That'll teach us to give 20% off from last week, wouldn't it? So loads of you have got this in the basket. 47.49, um, but this is his latest, latest collection, and it is absolutely exquisite. Um, a lot of you will recognise. Um, hang on, I've got a bit of fluff on it. A lot of you will recognise this from Joel Dubry. Uh, and that's that's one that we've had from day one here because it's always been so popular. That's the atrium one. So. That was the Avalon that we just had. This here is the other Joel Dubry. This is his atrium range, and this is his design roll. 40 pieces. I've only got, what, one of these? Is that all? So you're going to have to be quick for that one, 44 99 But beautiful colorways. Uh, you've got this lovely gray-blue there. You've got nice mustardy color, some aqua, pinks, and purples. It's a beautiful one, and we still stock this because it's been so popular for so long. Uh, now, Heather Bailey, uh, if you wanted the uh, Heather Bailey True Colors, look at these. 40 pieces. This, you see, this is trouble, isn't it? It all comes away like this. And then oh, you have to decide what you're going to do. Uh, but all of these beautiful colours in here, all these gorgeous patterns and colours with the Heather Bailey, 52 .99, 40 pieces again in there. And they're around the 44 inches, salvage to salvage. And that's, that's what you're getting. So we wanted to give you some options. So, uh, so you can get going with the project straight away. Your book arrives, your fabric arrives, and it's all cut, ready to go. Now, um, the other option that we have, these, oh, there you go, there's your Heather Bailey. That's what yours will look like. We've obviously had a rummage in ours. 52.99. Z-O-R-W-94. All sorts of colors in there. And some really gorgeous designs as well. Yeah, some really strong, rich colours. We've done some beautiful jelly roll quilts with this. And looking through, it's, 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 it's picking those fabrics that you absolutely adore, isn't it? And then going through the book and going, right, how am I best to display these? How am I best to show these? Decisions, decisions. Uh, now, we know that you like the Avalon and the Joel Dewberry. So if you wanted the fat quarter, because we're running very, very low on the jelly rolls, if you wanted the fat quarter uh, set, then we've got that for you. Uh, so this is a 24 piece, and you can then cut these up into your two and a half inch strips, should you wish. Let me pop these down here. So again, this is the same fabric that we had the jelly rolls in, but because we're running so low on that, and I don't want anybody to miss out, Then here we go. So just in fact, quarter form, get your rulers out, cut your two and a half inch strips. And again, you are good to go with your jelly roll book. It means that everything there, two and a half inch strips, you can cut for yourself. And especially if you've just bought your stripology and you're actually after an excuse to be cutting your two and a half inches, because that's what happened for me. Look at all, look at all of those, loads, loads and loads. Then you can do your own like that. Uh, now, the next thing are the complementary colours. So if you've gone 
for the Joel Dewberry, uh, then I've got some beautiful colours that you can then make your stash go further by buying by the half metre a plain fabric, makes it very cost effective, and then um, you can then cut your own strips again. So your first one here is violet, and that's 325 per half a metre. Works an absolute treat. Your next one is here, and this is your aqua. Love this. So, for example, if you're working with your aqua, yes. Love that. So, again, these are all of our spectrum solid range, 325 per half a metre. Get as much as you like, but it's just a really lovely way of making those designer fabrics go even further. Next one is flamingo. And again, if you're working with, there you go. Yeah, it's, it's lovely, isn't it? Really lovely. So pop that in your, oh. Now this is your dark blue. Hmm. And again, love that. Perfect, perfect. Uh, now, that's uh, your complementary spectrum solids. We spoke about lavender. <sighs> Absolutely love it. 250 grams. It's a, it is a, it's a big bag. And also, you can reseal it. It's got the, you know, I don't know if anybody buys sort of fresh coffee. When I get my coffee from the market, it comes in bags like that. <laughs> oh, smells amazing. I'm going to bring this over so you can have a whiff. <laughs> of it. So that's $8.99. Pop that in your basket. Check out um, QMHV65. Now the book is pretty much sold out. There's uh, okay. a couple sort of loitering in baskets, um, but more of you have it in your baskets than we do have available. So just, you know, if in doubt, give a call centre a ring to try and um, secure that. Sitting on all my leads. There you go. Have a whiff of that. That's amazing. You can probably smell it from here. Without so I won't it. open it. No, it's beautiful, actually, isn't it? Yeah. But that's going to work an absolute treat with your. It will, but also because we were talking about the pin cushions earlier, I'm not going to be able to flick through the way you do and open it on the page you actually want. But um, if you put it in any of the pin cushions that are made in here as well, then they're going nice. to be smelly when you put your pins in. Nice. Yeah, because that would sort of reactivate it, wouldn't it? You see, this is why you present and I just sit and <laughs> chat to you because I'm like, I can't find a page. There's a page with a oh, thing that's oh, relevant. Oh. Now, there, there's lots here because we've even got our hexi oh, flowers. Hopeless. Oh, yeah, baby this hexagons. Look at this. Yeah, we looked at the hexagon cushion when I was saying you didn't have to do any setting in, any Y seams. Um, but these hexagons are all cut from just the depth of the, of the jelly rolls, they're only two and a half inches deep when they're cut. So they're around, well, they're around two inches when they're finished. But this one, I actually machine pieced this. But Did you? you? I thought yeah. it was um, English paper pieced. I didn't do it over paper. No, I, I don't very often do it over papers. I will do it what they call American flat pieced fashion with running Ooh. stitch or on the sewing machine. Yeah. But I did hand quilt it afterwards because you were saying about how I hand quilt. You do like a hand so, quilt. But for me, of a hexagon quilt, that's the size of hexagon quilt. I would hand quilt because um, I could finish that. So, wow. yeah, little sort of not quite a quick fix of a quilt but just a but little beautiful. taster really really beautiful and again highlighting some of the, the patterns that I liked from the range that I used when I made it and so I guess depending on how much fabric you've got left over depends on how big you make it yeah I mean really with that this was just a little mini quilt but to be honest if you've got a whole jelly roll and you want to use the whole jelly roll for your rosettes then there's absolutely no reason why you can't just get bigger and bigger and keep, keep going keep making keep going keep going keep um, we're getting some beautiful makes here uh, let's have a look at some of the big the big the ones big. This was what you brought to air a year ago. This was, yeah, us. this was one of the versions of the, um, the spools quilt. And in the book, um, you also do a pin cushion. There's a pin cushion, yeah, just spools. using one of those, which are, again, really good um, little gift things as well. With those. So when you get the, the book, full-size quilts in there as well. Yep. 
and all that there are templates as well. So um, if you haven't got the right, or you think, oh, I haven't got a rotary cutter or the right rotary cutter, or you don't want to work out the maths. Then you can always the shapes, get the right rotary cutter from us. Then, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but sometimes people get befuddled with doing these right angles because you're cutting a trapezoid. You with your maths? Uh, me, yeah. and my, me and my words. Probably couldn't spell it though. Um, but yeah, you've got all the yeah, templates in the book as well, so you can use that with your ruler. So let you've me got a double show check. you. Oh no! What are we doing? Uh, I'm go I was going to fold it up. I just realised how big Why? it is, um, so that I could have a look at all of. The oh, actually, I'll just let them on that. There we go. Nice and cosy. So I can show you all the um, all the templates in the back. So they are they are there. Do these need to be increased or some of them will need to be increased and it always says in the middle of the template. And I know sometimes people are like, oh no, I've really it's pre-planning, isn't it, when you know the template's got to be increased. But at the end of it, we couldn't do the book and put all the full-size templates in for such a good price. Mm. So really for that little sort of just read through, if you need the template, you need it made bigger. It's it's like you know, when you do a recipe, you really need to read through everything to make yes. sure you've got it all in before you start cooking. So, um, yeah, if you want to make the templates bigger, it'll tell you. I've got these little chats. Do you want me to get those? If you can reach them. Oh, there we are. I love these. Again, you could pop your lavender in these, couldn't you? Yeah, we're getting getting pretty easy with we the are, lavender. Yeah, you might need a couple yeah. of packets of your lavender at this rate. <laughs> But there aren't they go. beautiful? So just just really diddy. Again, they're just made up of strips. Their bodies are sort of got three strips there sewn together and then the birds are cut out. The wings are pretty funky because we put batting wadding in between. It's great, absolutely um, great. And just, we've left it pinked on the outside edge. Again, if you, if you were giving these to a toddler or putting them within reach of, then you want to use felt here instead of the buttons. Right, yeah. But if they were just hanging from a door or if you had them in a nursery, then obviously if they, they're not accessible, then you can use show off your buttons. I think it's, uh, that's why I love uh, putting in uh, you know, lavender and things like this because it's a, a nice way to get some aroma in a in a room. Yeah, you've had a teenage son. <laughs> you understand about discreetly trying aromas. to, uh, to uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> the correct aroma. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, there's a discreet way to do it. Absolutely. Uh, door stoppers is another one. Yeah. Pop it in everything. Uh, now the book <laughs> is absolutely fabulous. What what is your favourite make? What is my favourite make? To be honest, usually because most of what I design and make for things like the, the magazine and so forth are, all, are virtually always quilts. So that's always great and that's probably where my real, yeah, quilts. But, and this is, I sound terrible saying this, I'm not a real cat person, we've got a dog, but the cat cushion that's over there is, is still one of my favourite things. And, and that's, that's, I sound, bit blasphemous not being a cat person that's okay but, that's but okay. there is a My dog pattern a as well in cat there person. for a dog but um but yeah I've all, I've just always thought that that was just I love it oh even no, though I'm not a cat person very very sweet we have lots of viewers that are I know so it, I think it's, it's all good but it just seems ironic for me that out of everything <laughs> you know I think <laughs> this, this is cat, I love his little lies. face I love his face yeah maybe you're a secret cat person I probably would be if I wasn't allergic to them. Oh, I mean, that is a big factor, that but um, helps, but it? yeah, I like that. His little little face. Oh, thank you. Gosh, That's thank right. you so much. Um, we do appreciate signing so many books That's all right. this morning, <laughs> and obviously no uh, our viewers do at home because they've absolutely made the most of that. Okay, great. Oh my goodness, good. thank you. Um, surrounded by so many goodies here, Karen. Can I ask? Can we not leave it a year and see you next time? <laughs> Please. <laughs> I have to see if I make anything else, won't we? <laughs> I think you've just made 68 things in this oh, one. That's, actually, that's a bit scary. <laughs> right, it just goes to show, doesn't it? Yeah, a bit distanced from the fact that actually, so I must have all those 68 things somewhere at home. Oh, I bet it's a treasure trove. Oh, well, this is the one off the front of the book, just this before is the we go. Cover, yeah. Look at this. Yeah, this was one where I wanted to use, I really like the range of fabric that I, I had for the jelly roll here is the, is the borders to the blocks actually. So the actual center, the four patch in these um, low volumes is, is not the feature, it's the borders. And okay. I just really like the crispness of actually having the sort of these play second fiddle, but actually framing stuff. So yeah, it's a favorite, it's a favorite quilt. It's great for this time of year, sunny, fresh, bright. Perfect. On the front of the book, it made the front 
to the book, this one. Um, so my last question for you, what comes first, the fabric or the inspiration? It's really hard because I work in tandem, but I'll be working on designs. I work on in um, on graph paper in black and white. I don't do any do colour. You? Yeah, I don't do any computer stuff, as my editors will tell you. It's like it all comes black and white and pe on ink paper and ink pen. And um, so I work in I work like that. And then I will buy fabrics or I have fabrics in little piles and groupings. And then at some stage, the one thing will click with another. Right. But it, it's very, not unorthodox, but it's a bit like one thing will happen and then something else will happen and then it will come together. And I, I've had some quilts that I've designed or wanted to make for years, but if I haven't got the right grouping of fabric, then I won't make it. So I have to wait. Oh, until, until, and, until I think arrives. it gels together. I mean, other people are just quite happy, you know, not waiting for things to gel. But um, well, no, it's fascinating. I love how, how people's minds work and how these things work. And obviously, your mind is working uh, incredibly. At some stage. To have Sixty-eight different designs here. We're out of time. Thank you so, okay. so much. Okay. No, it's been fun coming to visit you again. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Come back again soon. <laughs> thank I know you. it's a little trek from Tunbridge Wells, but thank you. That's okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank for you. Having me. I'm going to go look at some fabric okay. because you know, how beautiful fabric. And take your lavender. Have a book, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Take care. I will. I'm, well, you might be gone by the time I finish. So. I might be. Thank you. Oh, you know where I am. You know where to find me. Uh, now the lavender. House of Alistair. Okay, so yeah. Because this is House of Alistair, it will be dispatched by House of Alistair, so it will come separately. So don't worry if you get everything else first. Uh, once your order from us has been has been allocated and sent out to you, we then send on um, his his orders. So there might be a very slight delay. You'll get your sewing quarter stuff first, then House of Alistair will get this order in, and he will then be able to dispatch that. Uh, but my word, it is worth waiting for. It smells delicious. It doesn't change the PMP, by the way. It's still just 2.95 PMP per day. Uh, but I did just want to make that clear, just in case you do, you don't panic because your jelly rolls had arrived. We haven't what well, this one. We haven't been able to bring this since February, and it's always incredibly popular when we do. Do check out. Uh, like I say, well, there is a lot in here. When mine arrived, producer Hannah nicked half of it. She went, "Oh, that smells really good," and I uh, whooped half of it. Hey, what's going on here? That's how good it is. Smell it. Now, the next thing you have to start checking out on is Joel Jubilee, which, oh, this one. It's the only one left. The other one's gone. Well done. Uh, so this is the latest range that we have from Joel Jubilee. He's an American designer, graphic designer, artist, general, all-round clever chap. And this is his latest one. I'm loving this fresh palette of greens, your purples in there. Uh, how many do we have left and how many people have it in their basket? How many do we have left and how many people have this in their basket? Four in the baskets and how many do I have left and four left after that. So please check out your basket if this is what you're after today. Can I just show you, look at this gorgeous green. Now you see, imagine one of those raviolis done like that. Just beautiful. This is the joy of a jelly roll. 4749TXRW01. Now, if you want to keep with this collection, but you want more of it, uh, we also have a 24 piece fat quarter selection. Now you can see it's sort of merging on the desk here uh, because there are just so many of them. Here we go. Let me just move these along a bit so you can see them all. Uh, it is a huge collection. Here we go. So if you wanted to have a good look at one. So for example, oh no, I just showed you this in the green. So I'm going to go in and show you this one. Dee, 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 dee. How pretty is that? Beautiful, isn't it? And this isn't one that we really set because I don't think we've got this one by the half meter. But really, really beautiful. 
So you get 24 fat quarters in here for 92.99. Now again, you might just want to, to, to shave off two and a half inches off each and, and do you know any of those beautiful, um, beautiful projects in the book. Or well, maybe this is going to be an entire quilt. The, the joy of it is endless, absolutely endless. And if you do have your appropriate rulers, then you're going to be able to make your own jelly rolls as well. Because as much as it's lovely to get it like this, it's also lovely to be able to use um, fabrics that maybe extend this and make this whole collection go a little bit further. And so because we know that matching the colors is quite difficult for you to do at home, what we've done is we've found you four different fabrics that really work with, with, this, with this particular range. Uh, so this is the violet. And I think we can see how well that works. So by the half meter 325, you can see how, why we've chosen it. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Pretty obvious. Um, now, the next one is the aqua. Now, whether it's just to pick up a little hint from there, or whether it's to absolutely, oh, that's the wrong way around, go for it from there, then you are good to go either way. Um, now, we've also got flamingo. And again, it might be just a highlight like that. Now your flamingo details, 325 per half a meter. That's what you'll get half a meter. This is if you're mixing it through with this beautiful Joel Dewberry. Yeah, gorgeous, aren't they? It will all go with dark blue because look, I would be very tempted to know what produced for if I had bought either that or the fat quarters to get a half meter of each of these. So thir uh, three pounds 25 per half a meter for this solid fabric there. Now I also have for you, if you're after, you know, your jelly roll, your design roll, jelly rolls and design rolls, by the, by the way, they are exactly the same thing. It's just different terminologies like wadding and batting. It's exactly the same. Two and a half inch strips from Heather Bailey, uh, 52.99, 40 strips in there, all pre-cut. Yeah. What to do? What to, maybe you're going to do Ollie the octopus. Because you met. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, just pick pick out your different your different greens or something. Pick out a leg. Pick a leg, any leg. <laughs> uh, right. After the break, CL is back with the jacket part of the dress jacket combo that we started with, with at uh, nine o'clock, wasn't it? Gosh, I've forgotten what hour I'm on. So don't go anywhere because she's going to be talking us through all the juicy bits of that, which is ever so lovely. So don't go anywhere. Join us. Um, well, you can grab yourself a cup of tea. You've got a couple of minutes just to do that. And I'll see you in just one moment. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. Tune in on Friday the 1st of June at 11am where we'll be stocking the new Elner Experience 550, 560 and 570 sewing machines. With up to 50 stitch combinations and 15 variable needle positions, these machines are perfect if you love easy, speedy sewing. These all-round machines will handle an array of different fabrics with ease, ensuring you get all of the enjoyment out of your next project. So tune in on Friday the 1st of June from our brand new time of 9am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687. Join Jane Alcock at 12pm on Sunday the 3rd of June with her Georgetown Carnival Quilt. Create vibrant, colourful circle blocks with this clever design. Originally featured in Love Patchwork and Quilting, the bold, fun style of this gorgeous quilt shows its pure uniqueness. Our kit comes with a colourful rainbow of solids, so you can choose all your favourite colours and turn them into this fabulously funky carnival quilt. So tune in to see Jane Alcock create this fabulous Georgetown Carnival Quilt on Sunday the 3rd of June at 12pm, only on Sewing Quarter. Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687. Join us on Tuesday the 5th of June when Lucy Brennan will be here with two very different and very exciting projects. At 10am Lucy will be playing with clever print placement to create a modern mini quilt. We've put together a range of kits featuring fabric to help you get the look at home. 
Then at 12 p.m. we have the Clever Clover Slash Cutter, plus templates and plush velvet fabric. Combined with a little know-how from Lucy, a faux chenille effect is quickly created with classic shapes including hearts and stars. So tune in as Lucy Brennan teaches us these two tantalizing techniques Tuesday the 5th of June at 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687. Ahoy there, my hearties! Tune in on Tuesday the 5th of June when Jess Entwistle will be making a pair of pirates. So Cute Creatures is a book packed with so many toy patterns to stitch and Jess has risked walking the plank to make Peter and Polly pirates. She'll be here to show us how easily the patterns come together using this fun book with a special kit put together by Sewing Quarter. Even landlubbers will find their sewing sea legs in no time. So join Jess and her sewn buddies for an hour of swashbuckling softies. Tuesday the 5th of June at 11am only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687. Finally, we can start spreading the news. From Friday the 1st of June, we are going to be changing our hours. And I think you're gonna like it. First of all, we're gonna be switching on our live on-air light at the slightly later time of 9 a.m. So that gives you an extra hour for breakfast in bed. But even better than that, we are going to be live through until 2 p.m. So that's an extra hour on-air live, giving us five whole hours of dressmaking, sewing, quilting, seven days a week. So join us live on air for five whole hours from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., seven days a week from the 1st of June. Simply Sewing is a magazine for dressmakers and home sewists who are passionate about fabrics and love to sew with stylish patterns. Each issue is packed with technical know-how, templates and easy to follow instructions to sew yourself quick wardrobe updates, accessories, plushy toys, gifts, bags and more. Plus, each issue comes with a free dress pattern from our expanding trend-led collection. We're proudly flying the flag for contemporary sewing with stylish patterns and beautiful photography to inspire sewists across the globe at every level. Hello, welcome back. Now we've got a treat because we've got CL back in the studio to do the second half of the pattern. The first half we did the dress. Now this hour we're going to do this lovely jacket. Very flattering. Look at this. I'm going to spin it around because I love the dip at the back on the hem. Lovely. So it's really going to accentuate that way. Just very, very flattering. Really lovely. Now, um, there are various ways that you can do this. You can do, because the pattern comes with the dress and the jacket, you could do it all the same and, you know, be matching and, and gorgeous. Or you might just absolutely love that jacket and go, do you know what? With a little, with a little top and a pair of jeans, that's going to absolutely look a treat as well. Um, this is 14 to 22, this style guide here. Now, uh, the pattern there. Now, if you want it in the smaller size, then that's 6 to 14. We've got both. SXBR46, do go onto the website, check your size, just go from your actual measurements, measure and then just check because we've got all of the details on the website, it's one of the pictures and you can zoom in to then check your size, check you've got the correct packet and then also to buy the correct amount of fabric, which all helps. Now, the jacket that we've made out of our crepe to match the dress, however, Ciel, sa Ciel said, uh, she said that it was absolutely very, very doable as well with your, um, with your boiled wool. It would give it a different feel, a different look, and we thought, what a lovely idea. So, we've kept the offer. We did have to ask management. They said, yes, it's okay. We can keep the offer for an extra day. So instead of 11.99 per half a meter down to 9.99. And there are benefits of working with this lovely boiled wool 
we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, but this is 100% wool, a very snug and lovely. And this is your light gray. Let's go through these different color options for you. This is your olive. Here's your olive. Oh, going to sneeze. Um, and again, 999, <laughs> excuse me, yeah, per half a meter. Next one is, oh, you see, I think the green and the cream look lovely together. Oh, this is your ecru. Yeah, I uh, get that would look gorgeous in there. <laughs> oh, excuse me, St once I've started, we could be in for a long run of sneezing. I think my, I was with my mum in the car the other day. She did 15 in the trot. So I know where I get it from. Uh, 9.99. That's your ecru. Now your taupe. You see, this is these beautiful natural colours for this natural fabric. Beautiful. So this is your um, this is your taupe. And then the next one is wine. There, there we go. Now this is your wine, and again, very limited on this. This sold very well yesterday. It was eleven ninety nine down to nine ninety nine. We're going to keep that offer for you. Now, CL also told us, quoting you a lot here. Uh, it's a good job we listened. Um, we didn't think we had any of this, which is we could also make it out of this reversible fabric. I can't believe I missed this show. It's brilliant. Look at this. Now, this works because of the way the neckline falls. So it's only $5.99 per half a meter. This is your light gray quilt look jersey fabric. It's just brilliant, just brilliant. So if you can just imagine, so here your collar comes down and the feature kind of is the collar. So you would have, let's see, here. And then that would be, that would be your collar coming down there. It's lovely, isn't it? It's a lovely way, a different way of doing it. Um, and of course, all of the crepes we showed you in the first hour, they are all up on our website underneath where you can watch us live. They are all listed there. We've got Samba crepe, we've got, which is your four way stretch. We've got triple crepe, which is your three way stretch. Uh, and we've also got some lightweight ones. This is what we're making. Dee, 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 dee. Hello. You. Hello. Now. You had a busy morning. Oh, very busy. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you very much. But not as busy as you've been making this. <laughs> I have to say. Now, fabrics. Yeah. You know about you know about fabrics uh, because obviously in your in your um, job as a costumier for theatre and everything, yeah. you get to encounter all these different fabrics yeah. all the time. Um, now this we've done out of the samba crepe. Mm -hmm. I say we, you've worked very hard. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. Um, Inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> I, a very, very beautiful colour. It's great colour, isn't it? Flattering, flattering cut, yeah. actually, isn't it? Because of this sort of little dip, it doesn't look quite as boxy as you'd think. Because yeah. you were saying you thought it might look a bit boxy, but I think that kind of angle down there is just really feminine. To then come round to a mm. very flattering dip at the back. Yeah. This is Kingfisher. If you're after this colour, and it's a beautiful colour, mm. so rich, aren't they? The crepes really, are really I rich. Mean, I don't think you can really see it on screen, but it's a really jewel colour. It's mm. really, really rich. And um, yeah, it's lovely to work with. Now, um, the thing with this, you said, was it felt. Whoops! It's <laughs> knocked her head off. <laughs> um, there we there go. We go. It's like it never happened. Uh, <laughs> uh, is that you said you felt it was counterintuitive as to yeah. how it goes together? I'll leave you to explain that. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the great thing about this jacket is that it's not got facings, it's got not linings, things like that. And in some ways, the simple things can be the hardest. Okay. Because so, you've got to get them right because you've got nothing yeah, else yeah. to focus on. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, what I would say first up. Make sure that any markings you put on the wrong side are in thread, like this. Not in chalk, not in wax. Really? Because this section 
mm. is the wrong side. Ah, so there's a mark here where the collar joins. Yeah. You definitely don't want to see that chalk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So just, I mean, I've actually done thread marks. You have. You've done a tailor's tack. There it is. Yeah. Okay. So this is just because you can get quite confused which is right, which is wrong side, as we saw earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean. You, you had a human and moment. Then the other thing I'm going to say is it is quite a firm fabric. Yes. Micro serrated. Way to go. Now, uh, these think... scissors we had on yesterday, these are actually hand forged and hand sharpened. Are they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're good ones. Mm. So, so I hope you enjoy using them. I do. Mm, uh, but they kind of, snip. they just kind of, I was using some other shears and they, like the ones I brought with me and they just don't really cut very well. I mean, they do, but. Yeah, but these, not on this fabric. Yeah, it's just because it's so dense and there's like, it's triple crepe. There's all yes. these different weights. Okay, so the first thing is, because some of the seams you see on the right side. Mm -hmm. So the construction, we've got a top stitch seam at the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And that's literally just a seam pressed open and then the seam allowance is top stitched in place. With this crepe, do mm. I need to overlock my edges or do anything? It's not, is it a frayer or not? It doesn't, it does fray a bit. I would probably neaten the edges, but make sure you do it in a matching color because mm -hmm. you're going to see some of this. Okay. So some of this neckline we're going to see. I'm going to explain that later because it's going to roll out like this. Okay. So we want to make sure that it's a definite match. So sometimes I use, I've got two overlockers and I have one in black and one in white. <laughs> so I just hop between the two um, and that wouldn't work for this project. You'd, You'd want have to, to really actually get, get that, that so color. So that would be the beauty of a boiled wool. Well, this is what <laughs> brings me on to the boiled wool. Now, why is boiled wool beautiful for this? Because you can cut it and you don't have to do any top stitching. So the, the, this is a very simple project, but it's a little bit time consuming because you need to prepare the top stitching. Okay. But if you're making it out of the boiled wool... I just cut it. <laughs> just cut it. Just cut it. Um, because it doesn't fray. It doesn't fray. And that's the process that it's gone yeah. through to make it the boiled wool, the water process, the teasing, exactly. the putting a bit, the, the, the denseness of the fabric. Yeah. Um, which is great. So if you are maybe a beginner thinking, I really want to do this, but actually maybe my top stitch isn't mm. quite, quite, you know, display purpose, <laughs> then, uh, then maybe go for the boiled wool. But um, otherwise this crepe, yeah. you're going to be okay with? The Ponty. Oh, the Ponty Roma. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got my eye on that one. I think I'd have mine gray with just a little bit of orange on the outside. Nice. Mm. Yes. Um, yes, yes. Now, this is the boiled wool. Yeah. Um, for anybody that hasn't ever worn boiled wool before, because it sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? It's it like does. boiled sprouts, never sounds appealing, but tastes <laughs> quite tasty. Uh, boiled wool. Look at that. It's nice, isn't it? It's going to look lovely. It's just a really simple little jacket, and then the fabric is the showcase. Do you know what I mean? It's the star of the, the project. So with the boiled wool, I would probably not flat fell. Right, OK. Um, I would do uh, what we call a channel seam, which is like a top stitch seam like that. Okay. Because the flat fell in the boiled wool might come up a bit chunky. Right. Um, and it doesn't matter with the boiled wool. You're not going to do all the top stitching, so you don't need a, an encased seam. Okay. So if you've never done a flat fell seam before, so this is a bit counterintuitive as well. So I've done one on this side, but I've left this one open. So what is a flat fell seam? So basically, I did my two shoulder seams mm -hmm. and I've top stitched those. And yeah. then I have stitched my side seams with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance yeah. with the wrong sides together. Yes. So I've basically stitched this on the outside. Um, and then, I'm going to just turn this over. I've trimmed back one side. So I've trimmed off the back. Mm -hmm. And I've trimmed it down to a centimetre. Yeah. And then what we do is we fold in that raw edge. Actually, I might put, can I grab the sleeve board? Yes, of course you can. Oh, might be easier to see it then. 
So, so we've, we've, we've got one that's short. So you trim yeah. that one side. We're at that stage where we've, look, there you go. If I put my finger there, you can see that, that side has been trimmed back. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's longer. Okay. Yeah. So you can see I've put a little press there. Okay. What I've found with this fabric, and I'll show you over here, is that actually the press doesn't hold as I'm doing this. So I've put a baste okay. at a half centimetre or a quarter inch, and then another baste on the hemline. Okay. And that helps this fabric roll around. It's only for the, the, the samba. So this gets tucked in like so. Okay. And we pop a pin on it. So you roll it over the other seam. So it's a self-encasing seam. There's no raw edge anywhere. Oh, nice. So you use this on shirts. It's great for kids' wear uh -huh. uh, because it's hard wearing and it feels nice against the skin. Yes. So sometimes overlocking or zigzagging can feel a little rough. Uh -huh. So you want to really get that tucked in. So you can actually, if you decide you love this, mm. you can actually get a flat felled foot that folds it. As Flat felt like. foot that folds it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've tried saying that a few times yeah. fast. <laughs> um, which is what they use in factories, but there's a domestic version. Okay. Okay. So we could go and top stitch that now. Okay. Or tack it. Tack it. Now, I keep hearing tack it, tack it, tack it with this fabric. Yeah. Is that just this fabric or is it for so this all is a, things? It's a great crepe, but that little bit of spandex in it is giving it a bit of spring, which okay. is wonderful. So you can chuck it in your suitcase and it's not going to crease up. But when we want to have just such a tiny little edge, it's worth tacking this. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think this is quite a show stopping piece, this one. Yeah. Um, so actually, it is worth taking that time. I know it's tempting to make shortcuts and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Like me. <laughs> well, no, but it, I mean, uh, you, you're, you're sort of the exception because obviously, you know, you have deadlines and things like that. Yeah. But we do have to remind ourselves here that because you're sewing for pleasure at home, um, hopefully those deadlines don't apply. You don't just have an hour to show as much as possible. Exactly. And to be honest, I am saying tack it because I know I should have done more tacking. Sometimes. This is guilt tacking. This is guilt tacking. <laughs> This is makeup. Who knew that was a thing? It's makeup tacking. <laughs> so I'm just putting a little bait. So the, the thing is, I'm using a matching thread. Yeah. Um, because sometimes if you can't quite get all the fibres out, then it doesn't notice when you pull them out if you use a contrast. Yeah. Now, a note on this. Yeah. We have put on the website, underneath where all of our fabrics are, we've found threads that match. Great. So they're all on the website for you, underneath where you can view us live, where you can go straight to find all of the shopping lists from everything from today's shows. The threads are there for you uh, because we know that sometimes it's difficult to match colours. That's perfect. We try. We try. Here they are. Yay. On the website. There they are, underneath where you watch us live. So click on watch and then... Uh, they're all, there's been a lot of projects today. A lot of products, rather. There you go. Products from today's shows. Wow. There are your crepes and there's your threads. But you've also got your anti-static linings in there yeah. as well. So then I top stitch this edge. And it's there held and you're not having yeah. to worry about pins or anything else. So it's, it is like it's one of the times I really think I should have tacked and I didn't. OK. Always. So I'm not going to top stitch that because I am going to show you the top stitching in okay. another part. All right. All right. So um, the next stage is constructing the collar. Aha. Uh -huh. And the collar is super easy. So this is why it would work so well in a boiled wool. Because you could just cut it. Wait, and that you could, can you, okay, so with boiled wool, yeah. can you wash it? Yeah. Um, is there going to be shrinkage? You need to pre-wash it. I think it's already part of the boiling is pre-washing. That's kind of my feel yeah. on it, but I did want to just check with someone who knows more than I do. I mean, I'm a bit of a belts and braces. I'm glad that you use that expression. <laughs> <laughs> because I've said it to some of my students, they're like, you know, what are braces? But um, I always check things in the machine just to be on the safe side. Yeah. So, um, but I'm pretty sure it shouldn't shrink. Yeah, that was kind of when we when we asked around the studio, we all kind of went, well, it's mm. boiled wool, so it shouldn't. Um, but if you are in any in any way worried, just whack it through a quick wash. Yeah. Quick wash and prepare the fabric how you want to um, use it. So we do I need to pre-wash this one? The crate's dry clean, I would say. Oh, is it machine washable? I think it's, oh, I don't know. I need to check that. Um, again, 
from coming from a costume, I would chuck it straight in the machine when I got it and then just let it air dry just to be on the safe side. Yeah, air dry it flat. It's a lot of polyester, so it shouldn't really shrink in the same way. This is a natural fibre. And yeah. the jersey also is a natural fibre. So I have prepared this one. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to show you a couple of little tricks because I had a few problems. Okay. Okay. I had a few problems just because it was moving around and I was being too lazy to tack. And also the instructions have got you kind of hand stitching this corner. Okay. And it didn't for me give me that nice crisp quality I wanted. Okay. So we're going to do some mitering. I'm okay. going to show you that in a second. So these are the corners. And so you've you've just adjusted, made a few little yeah. uh, sealisms. Yeah. To make life easier. And if you quilt, then you'll know all about a mitre. They're probably better at mitering than me. Okay. Um, and it just gave me a nice little um, flat turn here. So trying to to double fold and then double fold. It was too thick. Again, a little bit bulky. Yeah. Uh, with your boiled wool? Nothing. Look away now, nothing to see here if you're working with the boiled wool. But or if you're ponty. working with your crate or your... Mm. Ponty doesn't pray. Mm. I'd, be te I'd be tempted with the ponty to leave it raw. Have a look at that too on our website. So yeah, yeah, yeah. do take a good look. Oh, exciting. Okay. But if you're working with the crate and you've gone for one of these rich jewel-like mm. colours, and it's, I mean, obviously, in the boiled wool, it's much more of a winter project. So, mm. you know, then um, I've got, again, my notches are just little snips. And it's really important that you have these. Yes. Because. You show that. There you go. There's your little notch there. That's the only thing we've got to match up to our jacket. So you really, okay. really need to make sure that you know where they are. Yeah. And that they're not marking the fabric. So you might see some of it. Okay, so you are going to finish, if you're working with the crepe, you're going to finish the unnotched long edge of the collar. Okay, yes. And the two short sides. And how is that finished? I'm going to show you that. Now. Oh, good. Excellent. Yeah? Excellent. That helps. So I'm going to show you a mitre and I'm going to show you how I did all of the rolling for like, you know, most of the fell stitching. So I'm going to set this to one side just for a second. And then we're going to have a little look at my jacket. So jacket's kind of constructed, and I'd do all of this before I put my sleeves in. Okay. She makes quite a nice waistcoat, doesn't it, without yeah. any sleeves on? Yeah, I mean, what I would do if I was going to wear it as this kind of sleeve, I'd just lower the armhole so that it's kind of a real slouchy one. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. Well, you can lengthen it. Ooh. In a ponty roma, just to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you can see I've done a little bit of prep. So the first thing that I did when I was practicing is I have used a contrast thread. Mm. So I actually got this trick from Amanda Wyatt from watching one of her shows. So um, because I found this quite bouncy yep. and I'm impatient, um, <laughs> I, I did That's this okay. trick and it works really well. So I've done one based stitch, a quarter of an inch or a half centimetre away from the edge. And is that just a long, long length just, stitch? I did it on a uh, stitch length four on this machine and then all the way around. Okay. Okay. The kind of perimeter. Then I've done a second one mm. that's two centimetres. Okay. Now that's on the pattern. It tells you that it's a two centimetre hem. Okay. The only place I haven't done a two centimetre line is around this front neckline. Because... Because what I found when I did the finished lady is that that stitching can be visible. Right. So I've not done that side. So this is just like my tips from having gone through making it. Like yeah, you no. said, second time's always better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can see I've done that all the way around and I've done it in a slightly different thread. Now, if you're using a matching thread, then you could keep that in. Okay. Or you could take it out. I'm Achoo. lazy, I'd probably... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look here, can you see I've done some mitres? Now, mighty mitre, what on earth is going on here? Okay. Okay, this is the counterintuitive bit. The mitre needs to be wrong sides together. So the hem... Mm. <laughs> you're looking perplexed. No, I'm getting my head around it. The hem all turns onto the right side. 
Is, which feels wrong. Oh, yeah. But it's right. But it's right. Okay. okay. So this mitering of these corners isn't in the pattern. This is a CL-ism. This is a ism. cl -ism. Neat. Mm -hmm. I like. Way better than getting a needle and thread out and slip stitching because there's one, two, three, four, five corners. That's a lot of slips yeah. to stitch. Yeah. And also okay. the fabric kind of wibbly wobbly. Okay. So what I've done with the mitre... Now, is the mitre um, great for for the crepe? What if I were making it out of, say, linen or something oh, like yeah. that? Oh, yeah. It's perfect for any fabric okay. because it really gives you a neat edge. And actually, the dress has got a mitre at the bottom of the vent. Right. So um, I am not a quilter. Okay. And I don't do mitres every day. So okay. sometimes I have to think about it. That's all right. And when I think about it, I want, I just make a corner like that. Mm -hmm. And the trick with this mitre is we need some space to turn this edge in. Right. This little inner one. So we're not going to stitch right to the edge here. So are you just going to stitch up to that line of yeah. stitching? And that's why this that base bit. gives you a little bit of a guide. Oh, yeah? this is clever. So this is, there's two ways you can do this. You can pin each corner and just kind of, this is what I do when I'm not sure if something's right, just check that it's going to fit, yeah? Mm -hmm. Or you can do one, make a little template and then chop the rest off. Okay. So it needs to be stitched at a kind of angle like that. Okay. There's probably, that's probably a 60 degrees, isn't it? Where your pin is? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So then we're going to take that and just give it a little bit of a stitch. Mm. Or is it 45? Because no, it's, it's coming, yeah. It's 45. Halfway, isn't it? So it's half of your 90. I told you I was rubbish at math. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just starting right inside that line. Okay. So this is precision sewing, and all of this top stitching is nice precision sewing. Okay. So, so a skill builder. Yeah. Okay. And just relax and enjoy it. You know, you don't have to rush through this because this is going to be a really lovely outfit. Um, my in-laws do a lot of cruises. Do they? Yeah, yeah, they're always on a cruise. <laughs> and um, and um, this is why I call my mother-in-law Glam Pam. <laughs> she does always look so glamorous. But also because on the cruises, you have to dress for dinner. Yeah. This is perfect. Yeah. But also, it's... It's that kind of classic shape that's not just smart, it's comfy. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Because it hasn't got a waist seam, you know, it just glides over the body. And, uh, and you can actually eat a meal and it still fit. Okay, so there's my little mitre. And before I'm going to trim that off, I usually give myself a little idiot check to make sure that it's going into the right, yeah? Yes, so that was how it was sewn mm -hmm. there. So, so there, there it was folded. There's your two edges folded like that. And there's, there it is. Double check, spin it inside out. Is that where I want it? Oh, very neat. Yeah. Do you want to trim? <laughs> <laughs> the, the pattern is brand new today. <laughs> Please don't trust me with scissors on your beautiful work. Um, $14.99. You, you trim. Okay, I'm, you just, trim. I'm trimming it down to about a quarter of an inch. Okay. And I want to reduce a tiny bit of bulk in this t the tip of this corner. So I'm just taking that corner off. Not too close to the stitching or it'll unravel over the time. And then we're just going to, you could use a dobber or a point turner and you want to if you can, try and press this open, but get it nicely pressed just in that corner. Definitely with the cloth. Okay. Because of this insidey, outsidey thing. All right. So that is um, how we kind of make all these corners look nice. Fab. Okay. So now what I've done is I put a little bit of um, steam through it, but you can kind of pin it. So in costume, we would base the lower edge and then uh -huh. base the top edge. Okay. Life's a bit short for that. <laughs> so um, I'm just doing this. So I'm holding that edge. And then this is where that second baseline comes in. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to tuck that in. And I find I got a much neater effect when I did it like this. So it's almost like um, folding on a perforated edge. Yeah. 
That's, that's effectively what you've created yeah. for yourself, isn't it? And because it's measured on the seam grooves of the machine, it can be a little bit more accurate. Oh, that's clever. Mm -hmm. oh, some top tips. Okay, so I can prep some of this. I want to leave the neckline for a little bit until I get my collar on. Mm. And again, like I just did with the flat fell, I'm going to tack this. And mm -hmm. I can tack this all the way around, but um, we're not going to do that. Okay. We only have an hour. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So then I would nicely machine baste this. And then this is where we're going to start with our collar. So I'm going to be honest here. Okay. <laughs> I did get a bit confused with the instructions. Okay. And so I have ismed it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and this, I think, is an easier way to do this. So I'm going to take my collar. Now, sometimes when I set a collar... Oh, hello, the old ham comes out yeah. again. I'm just going to think about this. So I want you to... <laughs> is this the counterintuitive thing again? It is. Yeah. No, well, this is because I'm going slightly off piste from the instructions. Okay. Yeah. So I want this wrong side up. Yep. And I want my collar right side down. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So just to let you know, this is how I've done it. And I find this much easier and cleaner than when I tried to. And it works. We, yeah. we have the evidence <laughs> behind us. Okay. So then this edge lines up with my mark. Right. And you anchor that there. Okay. And then my... Oh, no, we've got to go notch to notch, because yeah. that, was, that was your thing, wasn't it? Go notch, notch to, to notch. shoulder. Right. Now, there is another notch, but there doesn't seem to be a corresponding one there. So okay. we'll just do our little half and half. And then by putting it over the ham, you can ease it on without overstretching. And the other thing that this little baseline is doing is the instructions tell you to baste it at the seam allowance. Right. And then you see it. Okay. So this one we're not going to see, and it's also staying the edge, so it's stopping it from stretching. So you can keep that in? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm just going to bend this around, and the second notch goes over my shoulder seam. Okay. It feels all kinds of wrong, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Looks all kinds of wrong. But I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then this edge, so my finished edge of my collar, comes up here. Okay. So exactly the same technique as we did with the princess seam. Right. I'm going to just gently ease these in. Ah, yes. Yeah. So okay. that thing of like finding the halfway. So this again, is a skill that you'll get, isn't it? The more yeah. you handle fabrics, the more this will become second nature. And to get started, like the way that I do this with my students, I get them to have pin to pin, put your thumb in like that. And it's that circumference thing again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's your middle. And it only takes just to have that extra little bit of roll, isn't it? That yeah. little bit like that, and it takes up the slack. Okay, so we don't go skimpy on the pins. And if you're nervous, then baste it. Oh, right, okay, this is, this is going to sound very basic, but I know some people will be thinking, uh, what are the best sort of pins for this type of fabric? Um... Just a really, I like to use extra long, extra fine, or these okay. glass headed pins. So it's just a pin that isn't too fat, not a quilting pin. Okay. So one that isn't going to leave a mark in the fabric. So exactly. th that's why you want the, the thinner ones. And I just, as long as they're fresh, yes. as in new, because the thing is, like, I drop pins on the floor and all kinds of stuff. So you don't know what you're tracking into the fabric. Oh, I see. Okay. One of my tutors, when we were learning tailoring, as soon as the pin went on the floor, he said that we weren't to pick it up. Really? I know. He wasn't paying for the pins, so... <laughs> but, he you know, when, when they decadent hit... Decadent with his ah. pins, wasn't he? Well, he used to work for Chanel. Okay. Okay, so then between these two points, I'm just putting my thumbs in like that, finding that little halfway. And then same there. Yeah. So you get lots of practice doing this easing. And like I said earlier, this, this samba, the crepe, it, it kind of squishes. 
Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, we... It's a springy fabric, isn't it? Yeah. But it's also got that weight to it. We are going to take this to the machine. Okay. And again... That's a lot of pins. That's a lot of pins. Again, if you are nervous about doing this, then you can... Get a friend to do it. <laughs> no, no. Get Natasha to do it. <laughs> da -da -da. No one would want that. <laughs> Uh, you can tack that. Okay. Or baste it, whichever. So tack within the seam allowance. Yeah. If you And then just take it out or leave it in if you can't see it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to idiot check myself. Okay. That's the right way around. Okay. Feels all kinds of wrong because you can see it seam allowance. It does. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Just trust it's me. like a brain teaser, this. It is a it? brain teaser. So um, we're going to come to the machine and stitch this in place with a two centimetre seam allowance. Okay. Again, feels all kinds of wrong. And I need to really, really anchor right on the corner of that collar edge. Right. I don't want my stitching running past it. So this is why I can turn the speed down and then right. really... Um, There we go. Okay. It's a weighty fabric, isn't it? The it is. Trying to slip off. See, I'd normally shove my machine in a little, but then you wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. So we want to anchor it with a little back stitch. Uh -huh. So one thing I found sewing through this fabric is that I took my stitch length up a little. So I've gone to about a 3.5. Okay, right. Just so that it doesn't get too kind of pinched. Right. And again, I'm going to do... Uh, Oh, wow, they're not that small, slow. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to sew over my pins. OK. So if that gives you the heebie-jeebies, pick away now. Yeah, just tack. Yeah. And again, the needle, um, same one as we had in yeah, earlier. Yeah, fine stretch needle or a Microtex or even a blue tip. And a new one. It's really important that you don't leave needles in your machine and just keep sewing different projects so um, I had a student who was like oh does my machine need a service because it's playing up and then we had a little chat and she'd had the same needle in for about 20 years and okay. I was like yeah, that's economical <laughs> maybe maybe let's try yeah. just a fresh needle yeah, might work might, might do the job. so um, I tend to use my right hand underneath to kind of feel that I've only got one layer because again we've got this um, two opposing curves thing. Mm -hmm. We've all done that before. We, we trap the fabric underneath yeah. and then you take it away. And you're like, right, pass me the unpicker. Whilst you manipulate um, and have a play with that, you're I'm going to go look at fabrics. Okay. Cool. I will be back in just one moment. I'm stealing your jersey. I'm Salt. having that. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's got your name written all over it, hasn't it? Okay. Now, here's your pattern. We're doing this hour, the jacket, we did the skirt, the dress rather, sorry, at um, nine o'clock. So if you're after the dress and the jacket, this is the pattern for you. This is what our version looks like. Now that is in the beautiful peacock. Now you need two and a half meters for the larger size of each. So if you're going for the dress and the jacket and you're going up to that largest 20, size 22, um, then you need five meters of fabric in total. If today you've just gone, hang on a minute, I want to do this in the jersey or the bald one, I just want to do the jacket, then that's again, two and a half meters for the largest size. You can look on the website where this is um, underneath where we're live and there will be a picture on the back um, a picture of the back where you can zoom in and find your size and find your fabric amounts but otherwise two and a half meters will give you a little bit left over nice now the most popular fabric yes is the jersey oh gosh so let's have a look at this um, this is one that I've been looking at thinking was that was that quilted before or what how what how does this work beautiful it's double-sided look at this so, what you've got is your, um, your stripe one side and then just a little detailing and that quilting on there. 
What a fabulous fabric. Now, this is jersey. We weren't meant to have this today, but you know, uh, it's snuck on. I'm blaming Ciel. Uh, it's 50% cotton, 50% polyester, one fifty wide, uh, <laughs> and it's five nine. That was the most flattering view, was it? Um, do you want to see what it looks like on the jacket? This just gives you an idea, and and I think this really plays to this jacket's strength there, where uh, where actually that contrast becomes becomes kind of the thing of the jacket. So 5.99 per half a metre. For the largest size, you'll need um, two and a half metres. So that's five units that you would put in, in your quantity box. And it'll come as one great long length. Now, the olive is the most popular of the boiled wool. Now, again, thinking of this jacket, and this is why we brought this on the show for you today. Um, if, if having to work those seams, um, worries you a little bit then just go with your boiled wool where you can you just have to cut it and you don't have to do any hemming on it perfect so a lovely quick make then this becomes which is perfect 9.99 per half meter was 11.99 but we've put a little discount on there for you see how i hear the sewing machine has stopped to whirring haha <laughs> naha so all i did yes was I've just added another little baseline that like um, quarter inch from the edge of the collar piece. So and where where are we with this? Okay, so, so I've just stitched. What what did we leave you stitching? You leave leave me. <laughs> you left yes, me. We stitching did leave from you. that circle to that circle or thread mark. In in this bluey purple yeah. one. Okay. But you've gone and done another one. I've just done a bit of basting right. on this edge. So I could have done this before. Didn't think of that. Um, so I've just done it now. Okay, and so this was the one that we we did, that I left CL doing, mm -hmm. and that is a basting stitch there. In, okay. So this one is construction, and that's a guideline. Okay. So then we're going to turn this over, and we want to reduce, just like with the flat felled seam. Okay, right. I'm just going to trim this down. Yeah, yeah, yeah to a centimetre. Right. And again, some people like to use, I think you guys sell them, the little um, duck build scissors. <gasps> the applique duck yeah. build scissors, yes. Oh, and that, and that would be appropriate. Yeah. Okay. I like those. Do you? Yeah. I, I, I guess because I've gotten used to using scissors, these little snips, I find them kind of tricky. But oh, some of my students love them. I, I, I like to set up my scissors. <laughs> when they're, they're, especially if I've got a, like a gadget show or something and I have them all set out and it feels like I'm in an operating theatre. Pass me the duck build <laughs> scissors because they're all laid out yeah. and that's what it reminds me of. So um, this is going to be a fold that joins into here. So I don't want to trim this all the way along. So I'm going to... This is the, uh, this is the corner yeah, of your... This, this is the lapel here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slant up. So just graduate yeah. it up and off. And then we'll get rid of that. And then we are going to... I'm going to show you how this works all the way into the lapel. So the next bit of stitching is going to go all the way around the jacket. Whoa! In a while. Obviously, we're not going to do that. Um, Obviously. <laughs> and I'm just folding over that cut edge of the collar. Uh huh. So this is the opposite to the instructions. Okay, this is definitely a CLism. Okay. And then we're gonna pin this in place. Mm hmm So this is your flat felling again. Pretty much. And it's gonna join into the outer edges. Oh. So if you find it doesn't kind of want to bend too much, you can clip underneath. You can even trim it down a little bit more. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of pin. Over here. Now on that corner, can you mm. see I've put some thread? Oh, up here? Yeah. So what, what I found was turning that corner, because there's a bit of bulk in there, mm. was a little tricky and having the thread hanging out. So there's nothing fancy. I just did a few little over stitches. I'm going to use that as an anchor. To hoik it out. To hoik around the corner. 
Uh, hoiking, a very <laughs> technical dressmaking uh, term. Yeah. I'm sure you were taught that by Mr. Chanel. <laughs> As he was tailoring. Oh, no way. he wouldn't let you pick up a bit off the floor. <laughs> he wouldn't look. No, he wouldn't. Hoiking, yeah. yeah, let me tell you. <laughs> he only did jackets. Oh, my gosh. Um, but it's, it's whatever is going to give you that professional looking finish, exactly. isn't it? So we're going to use this as a little anchor okay. to stabilise the corner right. if we don't like hoiking. So here is where <laughs> this <laughs> bit joins into this bit. Does that have to be... Hang on, I'm just looking at it. That's... So we're, we're coming down yeah. here. So yeah. we're at this point here. So again, I'm just trimming a little bit of this bulk because this edge is going to fold over. And so we need to fold that on top of that. Because you see this. You see this. Oh, it's important you see this. Yeah. OK. So we want to really get this prepped well. Yeah. So there's only like five pieces to this jacket. Yeah. So it's not a really difficult sew. Mm. It's just a little bit labor intensive to get prepped. If you're working with a crepe. If you're working with a crepe. If you're working with a board wool. If you were using a linen or something as well, you could do this, but though you could get a lot of this in place with folds. So we're gonna do some stitching. We've got 10 minutes. Yeah. You it's stitch away. Loads of times she could whip up an Elizabethan okay. outfit in that time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, again, I would baste this. Okay. Should I baste it? Nah, I'm going to live dangerously. Nothing like living dangerously on live TV. It, uh, <laughs> it's always good. Uh, do check out those baskets, uh, just one P and P, get the amount that you need, uh, the fabrics that you need. Different feel depending on obviously which fabrics you choose to go for with this. Uh, so this is nicely tailored and very, very smart. Oh, Katie's asked a question. Oh, questions. For a size 12, we mm -hmm. do have a size 12. This yeah. is the size 12 here. Yeah. Um, there you go. De -de -de -de. Uh, then this is the size that you'll need. Uh, it's $14.99. That gives you your jacket and your dress pattern. And that has indeed got the size 12 in it. There you go. Very smart. So what's great is this pattern has got a crossover of sizes. Sometimes patterns go 8 to 12 and then 14 to 22 or whatever the size range is. And if you Bam, between that crossover, you might not have the right size. It's like ordnance survey maps. I always live on that bit, just where there's just an inch left of map. <laughs> it's just it's just how it is. And that's the same uh, with, with your sizing patterns, but there is an overlap here. So if you are if you are unsure, you've got that wiggle room. Okay, so I would start in the middle of the centre back. Okay. Because we're not going to see that bit of stitching, and that's okay. where my back stitching okay. would be. Um, and then... Oh, to hold it? Yeah. Right. Um, when I did the basting, I moved the needle over to left. So I'm going to put it back to needle centre. Uh-huh. Now, this is one of those things... It's slightly easier on the edge because it should be one centimetre. You just... If I had a baseline, I could follow that. You just kind of want to give yourself a guide. How do you find top stitching? Me? Yeah. Um, I just take it slow and steady. Yeah. And that's, that's, and I, I, I find a point to focus on. So I kind of try and keep, wherever I start top stitching, mm -hmm. I try and stick to that same, that same point so yeah. that it's equal. So actually this is coming up almost like the foot is lined up with that crease there. Yes. Um, yeah, if I can find something like that, that makes me happy. Even if it means that the stitch is just over a, a smidge. Yeah. Okay, so live sewing without any safety basting. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to take my stitch. Dangerously. <laughs> I'm going to take my stitch length up. I've taken it to a four because it's, quite it's long. I've got quite a lot of, of yeah, bulk in here, and it's springy. So this just means that the stitching doesn't look kind of pinched in. And again, I'm using that little finger feels. So this is the bulkiest bit, might take that down again. 
But again, I, I like the fact that because you've done this at the back where it's not shown, you've got a little run in yeah. to get it right as well. And Helps. to be honest, it's a really good idea just to cut yourself a little bit to practice with and, okay. and get all your settings, write them on a post-it note and put them on the machine. Okay. So for top stitching, I often do that. So I know what stitch length I want and what guide I used. Would you then just pop that in the packet so that when you come to yeah. use this packet again, you've already got it, what type of fabric it was, what stitch length, blah, blah, blah. So when we come in here, this is where I want to sort of really concentrate hmm. because I'm about to stitch this junction. And you see this. And I see it. You see it. So don't be lazy like me and tack this in place. Well, at home you have more than an hour. <laughs> Uh, or uh, six minutes. Uh, six minutes? Yeah. Okay. That's loads of time. Should have put the sleeve in. <laughs> and then we go... <laughs> so we come over here. So now I haven't got anything blocking this. I can use my seam guide mm -hmm. with about a centimetre. And then... Oh, you can really see that, yeah. Where yeah. you are on there. There's, yes. So when I come to this corner, this is where my little... Um, Thread is going to help. So the mitre. That's your mitre, your mighty mitre. Yeah. So my the line of the mitre. This is another reason why I like this. It also helps you kind of know where to turn. Yes. So we go right to that corner. And then when I come around here, I've got something to hold on to. Because sometimes that can kind of stick a little bit. Yes. And just having that thread. That's clever. Mm. That's very clever. It works really well for shirts as well, like shirt collars, yeah. which can be really hard to turn out. I take back my hoiking comment. That's it's a good genius. Hoik, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then again, I go nice and slowly when we get to the corner. And I often walk my needle just yeah. to make sure I hit where I want. And then we've got a nice little hoiker. Oh, you've got more hoiks? Yeah, I've put one on every corner. Oh, okay. And then turn around. Okay, so I'm not gonna stitch all the way around. Um, can you see how much easier it is where I've just basted it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you can fly it up well. Yeah. So where you've got kind of lumpy bits is where you want to just go nice and slow. Okay. And I might use my little dobber. Okay. Because you're going over quite, where you go over that seam, yeah. that shoulder seam. So I'm not going to go all the way around. So that's stitch number one. So that's the top stitch. Uh -huh. And then, so that's that inner row. Okay. Very smart. We're going to do an edge stitch now. Do you have to, or is it just? I, I don't think you have to. Okay. If you're going to do the little mitres, I don't think you have to. But whatever you do around the body, make mm. sure you do the same on here. I found that the collar looked a little pinched. Okay. But um, yeah, you don't have to. Could have made my life easier, couldn't I? Well, no, it's, it's, um, does it specify in the pattern? Does it, it does. specify your two, your two layers yeah, of stitching? Yeah, and it's really, these two rows of stitching are really controlling this um, samba. Okay. So we're going to come back to where we started. So it kind of is important. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's personal taste. Um, but definitely have a practice because this edge stitching is maybe a bit harder. Okay. I find by doing the outer edge first, this is a bit easier. And so for this, again, I can't give you like a super easy guide. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of letting my eyes go out of focus and I'm sort of focusing on a little part of the foot. Okay. Um, yeah, never focus on the needle. That was a mistake that, um, that someone told me not to do is mm. because if you focus on the needle, you, you get too late. <laughs> hypnotized, yeah. Whereas look to where you're feeding it in. So I'm actually looking at the the stitching that I'm following is hitting a certain part of the foot. Yes. But we've all got our own little tricks and um, whatever works for you. So when we come to the bit without the collar, mm. I have got a nice little guide because on the very front of the bobbin cover, yeah. we've got this little one-eighth. Ah. And if I line it up, 
with the one eighth, I'll get a really good edge stitch. So it's for the edge stitching that these really come into play. Okay. Because that's where I found it was trickiest to turn this corner. You can see I'm using my little yeah. scissor like Derek yeah. the Dobber or a knitting needle. <laughs> he is just a knitting needle, isn't he? Derek the Dobber. Yes, Derek the Dobber, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So I get right on that corner, needle down, raise up my foot and then hold on to my little tails. That, yeah, that's, that's brilliant having that. And that's going to give you that lovely crisp yes. edge. Perfect. Every and time. then I'm just following the one eight. Excellent, because we've got one minute. One minute. I'll do one more corner. Okay. Yeah, she's confident. But you've got your hoiking thread, so you can. I've got my hoiking thread. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. Okay. Just so that you can see what we've done. And now you can decide whether or not you think we definitely need two. I like it. Yeah, yeah no, you're right. I, I, I do like it with the two. So these, my hoikers just come out because I just caught them around that corner. Okay. Then if I wanted to, so I take out all my basting. Perfect corner. It's a good trick, right? Yeah. Perfect. I can't claim it all for myself, but so when we pop this on the mannequin, mm -hmm. which side? That side. Yeah. Hey, look at that. See? So where my hand basting is, all of that needs to come out. And if you haven't used a, a matching thread, those initial basting lines need to come out. But if I'd used a matching colour, I'd probably leave that in on the edge. And um, it's quite... So it was worth the effort, wasn't oh, it? Oh, it really Just... was. Oh, see, oh, thank you. We are sadly out of time. Oh. But how fantastic. Thank you so much. <laughs> when are you back? Uh, June the 17th. I hope I'm in. Fabulous. Thank you very it's much. Only a couple of weeks to wait. Yay. Brilliant. Maneuvering right myself. There. Oh, it's like trying to get a <laughs> trying to get an ocean liner through things. Now, uh, the pattern comes in two sizes. 14 to 22, which is on your screen now, or your 6 to 14. So I see, I see there is an overlap, which is really nice in here. There's no sort of rigid cutoff point if you're on the cusp. That's what it makes, the jacket and the dress. We did the dress at nine o'clock this hour. We've done the jacket. Really lovely, top, top tips there. Um, we've shown different fabrics as well that you might want to make this jacket in. Uh, there's your dress. Obviously, don't use the board wall for the dress. Um, well, unless you really want to. Definitely line it. Uh, $14.99 SXBR46. Now, the most popular fabric of the entire day, yes, is the jersey. Hey, let me show you this then. Uh, I think this has really grabbed your, uh, your imagination as it did with Ciel this morning when she said, well, hang on a minute, what about that lovely jersey that you had? It would be fabulous in that as well. So one side is striped, it's quilted as well. But then you see you're going to have that contrast, especially if you're doing this pattern with that. That, one way or t'other, could, um, could be that collar. Brilliant. $5.99 per half a metre. This is your light grey jersey fabric, uh, which is just superb. Check out your basket for that. We weren't meant to have that even on the show today. So you can thank CL for that. One PMP uh, per day. Now, we, of course, are going to start going on to repeats after we finish this hour. Um, also, bear in mind that tomorrow, when you turn on at 8 o'clock, we won't be live. Um, because we start new hours tomorrow. So tomorrow we start live at 9 o'clock in the morning. We're going to add in an extra hour and go through until 2. So we start an hour later, but we go on until 2. So let's have a look at what tomorrow has in store for us. John's going to launch this for us on new hours. So 9 until 2, 9 a.m. Summer Floral Fabrics. Um, 10, oh, we've, we've got um, K Facet and all sorts on there. Erin McMorris, Tilda, and more. Fabulous. We haven't had Erin McMorris for ages. 
Uh, 10 a.m. is your curvy Wimmel quilt. Victoria Peets in for that. Fabulous. That's been designed by Lynn Edwards, so you know that you've got quilting royalty going on there. Uh, now, Jane from Elna is going to talk us through the Elna 550, the 560, and the 570 sewing machines. Fabulous. So if you've got any questions about the machines, do get in touch for tomorrow for that. Noon o'clock. Um, Bex reads Cat's House Heaven. That sold out. I need that now. Now I've got my new kitten. Um, with Victoria Pete. And then 1 p.m. Uh, we've got sewing machines and fabric. So John's going to give a roundup of the day in that hour with all our favorite fabrics and our sewing machines and just helping you, you know, make a few choices. Exciting stuff. Uh, first time that we have done five hour days there and that's going to be our new timings. So nine until two tomorrow. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you ever so much, um, of course, to our fabulous guests, CL and Carolyn as well. Uh, Carolyn's gone home to rest her arm after all of that book signing. Um, but thank you ever so much and I will see you next week. But have a lovely rest of the day. Check out those baskets and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Tune in on Friday the 1st of June at 11am where we'll be stocking the new Elner Experience 550, 560 and 570 sewing machines. With up to 50 stitch combinations and 15 variable needle positions, these machines are perfect if you love easy, speedy sewing. These all-round machines will handle an array of different fabrics with ease, ensuring you get all of the enjoyment out of your next project. So tune in on Friday the 1st of June from our brand new time of 9am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687.